MVP. MVP for October, bro. It's got to be you, know, bro. You know was not playing around with no niggas at all. Run up, catch a fade. I slept on him. Niggas slept on him a little bit. But he had to remind you that this is you know motherfucking Clover. Put some respect on my goddamn name, bro. This nigga <laughs> single-handedly is about to whoop. Okay, with some help. But more or less single-handedly. <laughs> Going to whoop a, a demon, bro. Dante got whooped by Magna. We just saw Mega Kula get whooped by a coalition of niggas, but you can attribute most of it to Noel. And now we're about to see Zio get ripped by you know, like if I was the Spade Kingdom or at least these evil niggas, or at least the Diamond Kingdom watching this battle go on, I would be like, some is up with the Clover Kingdom, some is in them niggas' water, bro. Because three <laughs> non-captain ass niggas. Just took out goats, bro. Goats. You know what's funny? <laughs> Imagine not being from their kingdom and thinking like, man, I wonder what they captain's like. Right? Them niggas saw. <laughs> you know what I'm Looking at Nozelle, shaking in your boots. Yeah, you probably like, this, this her big brother? <laughs> Trash ass nigga. This dude probably <laughs> got all types of... Nah. Yeah. We must pay homage to him. Three, okay. two, one. Fake clap. Welcome to another episode of Afrotaku Podcast. This is episode 53. I'm Mr. Good Guy, a.k.a. MGG, and I am joined here by my co-host who will introduce themselves starting right now. Hey, it's Player 5. What's going on? It's Jugga. What up, what up, what up? I am Gramps. All right, uh, jumping straight into our story time. Today we got another question for the group, and this question is, do you skip the openings when you watch anime? Who wants to answer that one first? Oh, yes, I do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Even. Yes, I am. Um, I've become a very impatient man, so I skip them. That's awesome. fair. You know, as we get older, we got stuff that we got to deal with. But hear me out. The intro is very important to anime. You know, somebody knows anime intros be like two minutes compared to American intros is like 30 seconds. Exactly. That's because they really tell you what the show about. You got to watch the intro, especially on your first episode. I've never watched the anime and not watched the intro on the first episode. Now, you may then begin to skip if you decide, one, the music trash is way too long, and so it got to be over a minute and 30. Under a minute and 30, you come on, it ain't too long. Then you can start skipping. <laughs> but you got to at least watch it for the first episode. No, I agree. Okay. It's pretty much, I watch it once, yeah. and then that's a wrap. The only time I would watch it other than one time is that you do have those rare animes that I actually got to give them big ups for that actually update the intros per eps. They're very rare. They like I've only think I've ran into like maybe three of them, but they literally have slightly different intros almost per episode, kind of going along with the plot of the show. And that I gotta give the big ups for, so I give respect and actually watch those kids. But I mean, again, stupid rare. Other than that, it's just one the first episode just to give the intro its respect, and then that's a wrap. That's it. And let me um, add on one more thing. So. I don't watch the intros, but there is definitely one show that I've ever watched that the uh, <laughs> I watched the outro for multiple no. times. Oh, here we go. What show is this, bro? Oh, what show is this? Adventure. Listen oh. to that. <laughs> Yo. Yo. JoJo's Bizarre Adventures has some wow. of the hardest outros I've ever heard in most anime series, bro. Like, to me, that... That ending where that hit, they hit that to be continued, and then that outro just come in. I haven't seen it done better, but uh, I pretty much agree with Player Five. Like, I it's to me, it's a requirement to the goodness of an anime. I always like pay attention to that first opening, and I feel like it kind of sets the stage. Like, if you hear them niggas going hard on the guitar, uh, it's some heavy metal headbanger type shit. You might be in for some like gore or some heavy action. If I start hearing some QC music, most times 
I'm like, so you're about to be a slice of life or you go and start off as a slice of life. <laughs> you feel me? If I see if I see a shonen um where I just see niggas in beach uniforms for the intro, I can tell y'all motherfuckers is about to be slow. Like this arc is about to fucking suck. So Mm, that's right. Yeah, I, it's the same thing. I just use certain things to like gauge. Like one of the ones I love was like, um, I knew that season two, part two of that time I got reincarnated as a slime was gonna be hard off that intro alone. Just that niggas like walk with the swag and the beat in the back. I was like, okay, so they not they not fucking with niggas this this season. <laughs> yeah, I, I think oh, it's it, very important to learn the tone of the anime. Then I'll say this, another thing, since I'm, uh, you know, the, the slice of life watcher here. I think that, like, certain slices of life, or not certain, honestly, every slice of life I watch, I watch the entire intro every time. Because yeah, I don't, it could time. just be me, but I think it's, like, a part of the culture of slice of life and, and romance and comedy watchers. It's, like, because they start, they usually start off with a high upbeat song and then, like, a little dance. Like, you know what I'm saying? You'll go to conventions and niggas know them dances, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, it is, it's part of the culture, bro. Because, like, it's just, like, I don't know. It's, like, if you go to a, 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 a anime or shonen thing, right, and then you, like, yo, you start talking about Dragon Ball Z, everybody's expected to know Kamehameha. You might not need to know his whole moveless but you know something i feel like in the romantic comedy slice of life world it's like chumino know the intro you know what i'm saying like <laughs> that's part of the anime you know like it just i don't know i think it's different i skip shonen intros all the time but slice of life intros you only get 13 of them motherfuckers man you better stick to it Damn. do you listen to those songs outside of watching anime as well sometimes I don't go as hard as like you know like your your super deep Fujoshi weeaboos like I don't go that deep, but I mean I definitely got a couple you know what I'm saying. <laughs> mm. um, okay. Yeah, be that way. Uh, another thing I would say is like sometimes people just got bangers like, and I think the best part is is like Japan usually like a decade or so behind our music trends. So it's like when I listen to their songs, I'm like, oh, this is like 90s alternative rock or like 90s rap or R&B. You know what I'm saying? It feel nostalgic when you listen to some of these songs. Mm -hmm. I think another thing to call out based on what you're saying is just like, yeah, like you said, they just I feel like it's more relevant to our generation of anime watcher where like intros weren't always as like. I mean, you could skip them, but it just wasn't as like normal, I guess. You got to put that work in. Yeah. Or Figure you're watching it on TV. Or you're mm -hmm. watching on TV where you just have to watch them. So, like, I think we got more comfortable watching it where a lot of these people are just like, no, I'm trying to be efficient with my anime watching, so I skip. But the moment some of those things created, like, for me, when I found out Naruto Shippu didn't exist, and then I turned that shit on and listened to that first little rap intro, mm -hmm. I was just like, I know these niggas are on a different plane Level. of existence, you feel? I knew they That's grew real. up. So, or like, or like, we there's a whole culture around falling asleep and waking up to Inuyasha outro. You right. feel me? Thousands <laughs> of kids yeah. around the nation experience that's that, true. like, vocal yeah. touch. Yeah, like, that's shit. <laughs> I was like, four a.m. My bad. All right. So yeah. All right. I guess we'll cap it there. Any closing comments? Don't be skipping them intros, at least on the first one. Right. Just get a first Give episode a shot. shot. I think that's Give fair. A shot. Give him a shot. Give one episode a shot. Maybe the second season you could be like, fuck it. Because one thing I noticed, I, I don't like the My Hero intros, but I'll leave that alone. <laughs> yeah, some uh, people that'll ride or die for them. Right? <laughs> uh, jumping straight to decent news. Um, Starting with some comic book slash nerd culture mm -hmm. news. Uh, Not really news, but, you know, Star Wars Vision popped out. What if Marvel What If has wrapped up uh, we just want to talk about our thoughts from those who watched it of of those two series. Um, I did not watch all the episodes of Star Wars Vision. I think the only one I watched was the one that was very Kill the Kill-esque. Uh, I don't know if you saw Player 5, but it was like I the dude it. with the giant uh, lightsaber shit versus his sister mm -hmm. who were both on the dark side. It was like very Kill the Kill in art style. Yeah. And even like the way they were like kind of fighting each other. So I watched that, thought it was decent, and I was finna give some other ones a shot. Watched all of What If, thought it was good, disappointed that it kind of like how it wrapped up with 
all of them coming together to form some Avengers team. I liked the fight, but I wasn't a fan of every episode, so I didn't really like seeing all of them come together. Yeah, um, I want to start out by saying this one. Uh, these Disney Plus shows are hitting. It reminds uh-huh, me sure. of early Netflix, where when Netflix first started making their shows, like them, all of them shits was hitting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's showing me Disney Plus is here to stay. Um, but with that being said, Star Wars Visions, I watched all of them and the Kill the Kill one. You're like, you're right. It's 100% Kill the Kill x Star Wars. Um, I personally think this is how Star Wars should be, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Star Wars is is like, it's a, it's a, it's a shitty sci-fi. Right, yeah. sci-fi sci-fi fans would not like Star Wars because it's basically a bunch of magic that they throw dusty computers over. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you really come to Star Wars, whether you know it or know it or not, you come for a space western or like a space samurai flick. That is what's drawing you. And so people that focus on the sci-fi as- aspect usually get trashy stuff. But people that focus on like the western lone cowboy samurai flick style you get good content because that's how star wars works Mm -hmm. i think star wars was meant to be in the hands of of anime bro like give it up bro it's done with the movie theaters Mm -hmm. you over with give it up either make it a cowboy western or make it an anime flick because they are hidden even the ones that weren't that great were better than the trilogies that they dumped billions into and i think that that's really a good point that you bring up because i feel like the thing about Star Wars, I don't did Star Wars started as like George Lucas's idea, right? I have that right. It's not like yes. a book or anything. Books and everything came later. So with that, he built such a massive world because it's in the sci-fi genre of planets and stuff. But we focused on a very linear story. So I think he built a great world to keep building off of. Cause you can say all of those stories and vision were canon. And it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter much or affect much because they all kind of have their singular loop. So I like that that world, we can build on that world through all the stuff, like all the Star Wars side series, but I really like what Visions did because it just gave you smaller stories about different, um, you know, Jedi or or other things going on. And that's what they do a lot in the games as well. They'll take like a random, like I think the, the latest Star Wars game is just about a random dude that kind of like was in between the whatever happened in the prequels to the Luke Fallen Skywalker order. shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's just like that type of stuff where you can kind of just create your own Jedi story, explore the lore, and it doesn't really impact the main storyline, I think is like really cool. So I, I feel like they can keep building on that and making money off of it. Just let niggas create their own little Star Wars side stories that mm-hmm. had nothing to do with the main shit. Yeah. I, I don't think Star Wars works as good with a connected universe because then you start to find plot holes and then yeah. honestly seasoned star wars veterans will go back like i said i got probably over a hundred views of star wars movies combined the more you go back the more you realize george lucas wasn't that good he <laughs> just was kind of revolutionary for the time that being said just let his work be his work put it in a museum somewhere and then just everybody started making their own star wars content like you said i think it's just better when especially when you aren't restricted to trying to make a canonical story to a story that wasn't that good right exactly and it's like and he set it up so you can kind of create that because it's like there's a bunch of fucking jedis we have no clue fucking about. Like, there was armies of these mm-hmm. things. Gigantic, so, a whole galaxy of yeah. who knows what. There's a literally whole section just called Unknown Space. So anytime you want something, you can be like, hey, they came from that spot, yeah. the unknown region. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, you do whatever you want. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and as far as Marvel, oh, uh-huh. well, you want me to rate it? Oh, yeah. Where did you rate this Visions so far? Tough. Uh, for a Star Wars show, I would give it a solid decent as hell. Uh, for just a show in general, decent minus. I don't think it's so good that it will captivate you if you are not already inclined to watch Star Wars. Uh, but if you are a Star Wars fanatic, you will enjoy yourself. I think it's fair. I, I only watched one episode, so I can't give it a rating. But from what you said, I felt like I aligned with that. Yeah. I think so. I would never like refer this to anybody that wasn't already an avid Star Wars fan. Right. Or animation yeah. fan, possibly as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as Marvel's What If, um, so far, 
Got to call it my favorite. You know, really? people slept. Of all the series. Of all the, the series that have been out, uh, or not like the movies and shit, but just the Disney Plus series. Uh, you know, I was talking with my brother. He wasn't sure on it. Oh, it's animated. Talking to a lot of people. The part of it being animated had a lot of people sleep. But boy, did they stick they Disney dick in it. That shit was <laughs> fire. Man, that was fire. Uh, Come on, bro. You going you gonna to do that to Hawkeye? Hawkeye ain't came out yet, bro. He might, he, he, he might turn up. He might turn up. But, you know, I don't suspect that. I suspect Hawkeye to be the least the viewed of the shows. <laughs> but and, but not because, not white because man Hawkeye with arrows. Bad. Just niggas ain't got respect on them. Uh, come on, white man with arrows. You not watching that? Come on, bro. Because <laughs> he already got to compete with, with Arrow. Arrow, that was a hard enough job. I when before Arrow came out, I was like, "There's no way you're gonna get people to invest in a white man shooting arrows." Like nobody cares about that. That doesn't in nobody's mind. Arrow made it happen. He's fighting an uphill battle. If he gets over the hump, <laughs> props to you. But I don't think anybody no. wants to see a white guy shooting arrows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody no. since Legolas. Nobody. <laughs> Well, I'll give it to you. I think I don't know if it's my if it ranks as my favorite of the shows yet, but I will say that uh, I we watched I watched all of them with my wife, and she did enjoy the few episodes that they had there. To me, it was just the, some of the stories they picked. Like I still haven't watched the first episode. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like wasting my time with it, which I That's like about the show. I don't feel like I missed anything not watching it. Nope. Um, but at the same time, it's like yeah, I do wish that they freed themselves up a little bit with some of the episodes to just not necessarily stick to what we know from the movies. Like yeah. you can tie the movies and then run with it, but it felt like they were very focused on making sure it was like oh. recognizable from the movies in some way. And Hear me I was, out. Mm. I feel, I feel the exact same way as you, but at yeah. the same time, if I had to make the choice, I would have done the exact same thing as them because right. your average viewer needs something to kind of connect to. Yeah. But my issue is, is that some of those shows, the Agent Carter one or mm -hmm. uh, Captain Carter one to be specific, uh, they were very tame. You have the entire multiverse to deal with, right? We had a whole episode with just zombies. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can do anything. And they was like, mm, we're going to make a female Captain America. Right. Ah, they felt a very test in the waters. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff. I'm like, bro, y'all could have went crazy. She could have yeah. did anything. Like, that's why I like the Doctor Strange one, because it that went was off the rails. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even close. It was, it was no idea. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> With the Captain Carter one, like, it was just like, oh, I watched Captain America again, which was one of the worst MCU movies. You just made me watch a bad MCU movie again. <laughs> and I was upset. <laughs> The Doctor Strange one, the Killmonger one, I was like, boy, like these decent. Yeah. Killmonger, yeah. boy, he ain't shit. He ain't worth shit, man. He ain't worth two dead flies. And that's what I felt like my thing was that team he did at the end, they had an opportunity to just like, I get that they want to bring some of them people together, but those were not the best people you would pick. I would not pick drunk, silly Thor from like universe set. You know what I mean? There is definitely from the niggas who know the comics, there's definitely a version of Thor that is like OP as fuck that he mm -hmm. could have just been like, hey, I'm picking you, motherfucker. Like, you do that shit. So but, I, I, I'm I, not saying everybody needs to be replaced, but some of these weak motherfuckers, I felt like they could have just picked another OP nigga from a multiverse that they didn't make an episode about and just been like, oh, you make sense to be here. Like and Gamora, like, they didn't make an episode about her. They was just like, you, we're taking you. Right. I feel like uh, given that the Watcher can see all time and all realities at the same time and knew exactly how this will go about, mm -hmm. I feel like the truth of the matter is none of them mattered except Black Killmonger. Widow and, <laughs> yeah, Killmonger, Black Widow, and, uh, and, and Doctor Strange. Everybody else was there for fluff. Because yeah. let's be fair, you said, why pick that Thor? That's the least important Thor in all the multiverse. 100%. That it was like... Bro, what we're dealing Bottom with is a multiversal the threat. There's nothing any <laughs> Thor can do about it. Let me take the Thor niggas gonna miss the least. Like, yeah. I'm picking you, bro. Because if you die, nobody gonna trip, bro. Damn. That's what that had to be. He picked that Thor because he was like, fuck it. If he die, ain't nobody gonna care. I hear you. But, but yeah. yeah. No, overall, it was, it was great to watch. Like you said, I think the Doctor Strange episode from all that I watched had to be my favorite. I think the last one was just cool from a 
Which just seen what you missed? Uh, the ones that I skipped were the Killmonger episode and the Peggy episode. Um, and I believe I watched all the other ones. So those are the only ones I missed, I think. The yeah, Killmonger episode, not bad, but I mean. Yeah, I kind of heard about the story before I watched it. That's why I just did So you was like, fuck it. Yeah, okay, yeah. fair. Save, save you 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think overall it was good. Like I, I can't fault anybody who says this was the best of the series that they put so far. Like my thing is just I had more personal connections to some of the other ones. WandaVision right now to me is like a probably the it's the second lowest. Don't call it the worst. It's the second lowest to me. And it's that's low. only because of the privilege in that episode. So so far we've had I'm I'm saving the bottom spot for Hawkeye to be completely honest. Damn, <laughs> preemptively? That's yeah. disrespectful, bro. That's I'm not I'm not buying that it's gonna be like to me for Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which was basically just an episodic Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. To like, I don't see how Hawkeye can be any better than that. Fair. I think that's the route they're going, and I don't see it beating that one. So it's gonna be dropped on the what, list. What's crazy though? I found a lot of people. Uh, at first, I thought it was just you that was kind of upset at Wanda's lack of conf- uh, consequences. Yeah. I think I ran into like four or five more people in real life that were upset she had zero consequences. Right. But like I say to all of y'all and any viewer out there, what in the fuck was you going to do? Like if, if Wanda did that to you, you know what she no, just did. I, if I she started walking off, you're going to say, officer, arrest that woman Barbie. that can manipulate reality. Like It's a Roshi Baru for sure. But like... Yo, she was coddled though. I just, I just feel like she was coddled. What That's you it. want her to do? You My want thing, somebody to start beating her? No, no, you can't change. Right, you can't give her consequences. I, I feel that. But the fact that the story was like enabling her decisions, as if, oh, we totally get it. Like Monica Rambo came up there and was like, literally, like, yeah, what you did, I get why you did it. I'm like, no, nigga, I don't get why she did it. That shit was wild as fuck, bro. You yeah. went to a town. And my raped everyone there. And then See, just look. I, I think that's disrespectful of you. <laughs> Monica, a trained agent, was like, yo, this emotionally unstable girl just chilled the fuck out. <laughs> and all these grown white men is yelling at her. We better stop before we all end up in some shit. So she was like, hey, I get you, Wanda. I would have did the same thing and just let her go because that was the smartest move. Everybody else that would have antagonized her, y'all tripping, bro. Like that, your ass would be a slave. Like like that, boy. Ain't nobody <laughs> saving you. Oh, I would have just took my L and be like, all right, Wanda, call it a day. Oh, go ahead, oh. bro. I, I just hope in the multiverse of madness or wherever she's going to show up in, she get dragged at least for a good little bit of time just for those <laughs> as consequences. That's it. Whatever <laughs> multiversal threat going to pop up, I just hope he give her a good two-piece biscuit, you <laughs> feel me? And then yeah. I'll be like, all right, cool. You got your consequences, motherfucker. Then yeah. you can erase all the mutants again. But anyway, <laughs> Marvel What If, I would say, yeah, definitely a solid, like, decent as hell for me. Like, I think anybody could pick it up and enjoy watching it. And especially if you're a fan of the movies, like you said, maybe the animation ha- gives you some hesitancy. But, like, if you sit through and watch, there's definitely going to be at least one or two episodes that resonate with you. Yeah. Like, that you'll be like, oh, I enjoyed it. So, it's worth the watch. I want to give it a lit, but because, as I mentioned before, they play too safe with such an open concept, I got to bring it down and give it a decent as hell. Yeah. It could have been lit. All right. And then, so I just tossed this out here because it came on. It came to my mind when we were talking about other stuff. But if nobody watched it or cares to talk about it, we can skip it. But Squid Game, did, did niggas watch that? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, everybody saw it? All right, Ben. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Let's talk about how this was like an anime we've all seen before multiple times. But like, what's new to everybody else? <laughs> exactly. Oh, like, bro. <laughs> can I just what, say this? this? Guy? Yes, there's a whole genre dedicated to regular niggas playing dangerous games that get them killed. I want to put this out here, bro. For 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 every nigga everywhere that ever hated on anime, and, and on my feed alone, it was about 50 niggas that I know personally. They'd be like, anime trash, and then go watch Squid Games and <laughs> fangirl over it. Bro, <laughs> you just really got to unlock your brain, bro, because like right. Squid Games is really a knockoff of a knockoff anime. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
<laughs> there are anime that do this way better. I'm telling like, you. But it was good. I'm not gonna cap, bro. It's it's like it's like Demon Slayer with me. It, it pissed me off that niggas are into something so basic when yeah. there's much greater out there. Right. So I can't sit here and be like, whoa, this is the greatest ever. But like, mm-hmm. it's all right. It's decent. Yeah, I definitely see why it pulled people in. But then I was also like, I was talking with my wife and I was just laughing at it. I was like, it's kind of funny to think that now this type of shit that niggas would like maybe back in the day see you watch and be like, maybe this motherfucker is a serial killer. It's not like popular TV. Like people are enjoying watching motherfuckers get murdered. No. I'm going to tell you the part that, that brought me in for the Squid Game. I was not with it for like the first episode and a half. But when dudes start getting the shit slapped out of them, <laughs> that was my favorite scene. Because, you know, we get into this conversation all the time, what niggas will and won't do for money. And I just like, bro, niggas be capping in public about what the fuck they won't do for money. But you get that untaxed 1K in front of somebody. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to start seeing what niggas do for that untaxed 1K. <laughs> oh, man. I'm like, you see, I get the whole thing. No tax. Come on. Yeah. And I thought it was nice how they seasoned it in, too. Because, I mean, like, the the red suit motherfuckers were like, hey, bro, um, you guys didn't fucking trust us. But then as soon as we offered you money, you guys were down. Like, none of this stuff was, like, not that. Like, we didn't force you to do any of this shit. No. And then not. even the whole, like, canceling but coming back thing, I thought it was, like, nice to showcase that. My only thing about it is because it's so big. I'm scared that they're going to over-season it. Like, just, like, keep trying to put out season, make the story go long. But I think all of us who've watched this type of series before kind of knows what's going to happen. This first one was to feel sad and be, like, fucked up. And I personally feel like next season is pretty much, like, if they want to end it, take down the thing. But to, like, understand, like, how the actual fucking game works. And it's going to be less, like, emotional trauma. Them niggas. I yeah. Feel He's going to join them niggas in the end, yep. Uh, I feel like it's just going to be less emotional trauma in that next season. Like, this one was very, like, you know, tear-jerking, get the character's backstory, feel for them at different moments. I don't, I feel like the sex, second season is going to be more action-based, if that makes exactly. sense. Exactly. Like, I'm no, not going to That's where the problems them. with these kind of shows go, though. Like, you lose yeah. the basis of what brought people into good. the show in the first place. But no, like I've been holding that in for a minute though. Long story short, <laughs> this is a decent show that got so much hype, it literally blew my mind. Yeah. Like I literally had a conversation that wasn't brought up by me uh, with a group of people that I've been effing with for the longest trying to get them into anime. And they bring up the conversation with like, you know, like sparkling their eyes. Like, uh, yo, y'all see Squeak Gang? <laughs> <laughs> The fuck? <laughs> it, it is honestly mind-boggling how that just works like that. So I, I've been I've been holding in my frustration about that for a minute because I got no qualms with Squid Game. But like, bro, F and um, y'all check out the Netflix show that's not even old. F and um, Alice in Borderland. Y'all hear I've about heard this? of it. I haven't watched it though. I've it's it literally like the same thing. I mean, it, it's a death game. Long story yeah. short, right? It's a real life death game, and it barely got. No coverage. Yet, what? We tack in a little bit of money, a little bit of talk about politics, poverty, etc. And like that's all it takes to blow it up that hardcore. I don't know. It's just you know, it's it's still just frustrating to me. I I I see what you mean right there, because I too am, am frustrated, but I also see why, yes, bringing in money and debt was so uh you know um, enticing to people because that truly is the narrative right now you talk to anybody money is on everybody's mind either you got it or you ain't got enough you know what i'm saying okay. and, and and that is one thing i really liked about squid game because i i have this conversation with people all the time they're the poor that want to eat the rich and feel like the rich deserve to give them money you know for no reason and then i'm like bro if you were rich you would do the same things and I feel like that's why I believe he's going to join in the end of Squid Game. The first part was to be like, hey, you know, rich people don't necessarily have to give you things. And some of this shit you choosing to do, you choosing to do. You know what I'm saying? And then I feel like what we're going to see is like, let's say if he he's won his money now, he's effectively the rich. He could start, you know, giving to the poor and doing effectively what he wanted, being a good person. But he literally sat on that money for a year and didn't do anything. Sitting on your money from a year cannot be any better than spending your shit wildly. You know what I'm saying? You actually just hoarded billions of of wands. 
Yeah. Like he's as equally as horrible as them when it comes to economics. So I think what we're going to see in the second part of Squid Game is that this dude is literally no different from them. And if he get on top, he going to do the same thing to the people at the bottom. He going to be like, oh, your ass is stupid. Let me abuse you with this money I got to give you money because money is important. Yeah. No, I feel you on that. And I think that that was one of my gripes with the end because I was like, all right, you built up all this sadness and basically you put all the weight of taking care of shit on the good guy. And it seemed like it take it took him a while to actually like get that shit done. It's like, I get it. Your mom passed. That shit fucking sucks. I know it's not fun. But like at the same time, it's like, bro, you have all this money that you're not spending. So just like give it to who you say you was going to fucking give it to. And even at the end of the day, they kind of told you like, oh, if y'all quit the game, we get all this money to the niggas that died. I'm like, if you want to do something That's good, not- you have more than enough money to go and do basically what they said to do which is give money to all the niggas that die. You could just mm-hmm. make that your life fucking mission. But he was just like, fuck it. And that's why it's funny to me because I was like, no matter what <laughs> happened, he was still running away from being a good father. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Through the whole fucking shit, you still ended up being a shit dad at the end of the day. And I'm just like, what was the point of you winning? And I just thought he was so like dumb because I was just like, after a while, I would have, like, figured out that this nigga was on bullshit with me. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. when that nigga was like, oh, hey, blah, 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 you pick whatever you want. I picked that umbrella, and that nigga didn't say shit. And he knew, I figured out he knew what the game was. I would have been like, yo, bro, you're not fucking with me. Like, clearly, like, when you saw that the two dude and that uh, Indian guy went into the game, you knew what happened, and that Indian guy fucking died, I would be asking myself some questions like, oh, how the fuck this nigga died? And it's yeah. like he got it towards the end, sort of, but he still had that like part in his heart where I could see clearly, and I think everybody who watched the show could see clearly that pretty much probably by like the second or third interaction with them, that nigga was like, I'm winning this money. Like, I don't know if you get it, but at some point I'm in this game to like win. Fuck it. And like, mm-hmm. fuck you. But he just was like, no, nah, that dude, my friend. I'm like, yeah. bro, it's clear that this you know. Nigga- with you. Everybody that be crying for Ali, I find it funny. I have zero sympathy for Ali. Damn, really? I, I actually think Ali is fucking goofy. Like, bro, like, come on. Because here's I, my thing is that, like, that that makes you entirely too trusting of an individual. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, to be an actual animal, you're a fucking animal. And mm-hmm. to live in this world and be that trusting of a person you only know for a few days is, is a little... That's like anti-survival at that point. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like I have zero sympathy. If he was a child yeah. and hadn't experienced the world, it's like, no, you're an immigrant. You got a whole kid. You got a family. You working right. at this job. Like, you have life experiences. You, that's absurd. Why would yeah. you do that? Either if, if this guy got some type of disability, fair, I'll accept that. Mm-hmm. Or if he was a child, I'd accept that. But as a, a rightful, right-minded adult, I mean, my man no already got robbed by his own boss yeah. for however long he was working there, so yeah, he knows sure. what it's like for niggas to steal money from you. Yeah, um, I honestly felt like that nigga was just ready to die either way because my thing was like, even if you got out with all that money, you still fuck that nigga. Up. Like maybe you could fight that case with the money that he would have gotten, but like, no, nah. he straight ran I, away though. Yeah, I, money, so oh, my thing is, I felt like the return. Uh, let me say it this way: the return of him to that game to me, confirm that that nigga was going to die. Mm-hmm. Like, because I was just like, the situation you left, you already sent your kids away, you done fucked this shit up at your job, you definitely can't go back to this shit. Like, you're a wanted criminal, like, you're still going to have to fight that thing if you win. It's not like anybody thought he was going to win anyways, but I was just like, you're for sure going to die. <laughs> Personally, I feel like... um <clears throat> The host of the game, they be bullshitting because they, you know, they'll stop somebody from cheating, but then the host cheat. Like, for they said the rules of the game was that you had to win the thing from a person in a consensual game. Tricking somebody and stealing their marbles, and we know they got cameras all along you, so it ain't like they didn't see it. Tricking somebody and stealing their marbles is against the established rules. Mm -hmm. I'd have been like, hey, I didn't, he stole those. There was no game we consented to. I think he should be shot. Right. Maybe I get shot, but I'm just saying. Or when my boy was looking through the glass and figured it out, they turned the lights off on him. Yeah. I was like, "That's dirty, that's <laughs> dirty right there." Bro. That was exactly. Yeah. That, that's yeah. that's the biggest part to me that killed me. Right. 
That that shit was definitely like some like, all right, bro, y'all playing. Yeah. Uh, and they didn't shoot uh Il Il Sum or Il Nam, the yeah. old man, they didn't shoot him. I'm like, if he got also shot, the hey. camera didn't work on him either on the first mm-hmm. game is apparently what the like the theory was too, was to saying. kind of foreshadow it was that that stop and go game like it wasn't picking him up at all so he was yeah, never if, gonna lose yeah if you go to one of the scenes or whatever where it was like scanning all over the place yeah. it had like green circles around everybody except for him yeah and the chick that was directly be- behind him because it i'm pretty sure it had like a protective bubble not to be able to see him mm-hmm. no they had those scenes i mean i've always wondered how buddy got on top of the beds with the whole you know night murder whatever that too. <laughs> I didn't I think about like, that. <laughs> I was like, there was too many questions when he first entered. Because I'm like, yo, if this nigga is really this dumb, how did he consent to the game? How did you find him? What did you need to get him? You know what I mean? Like, all of it didn't make sense. And then he came back for a second round. So it's even double, like, who was... It just didn't make sense how everyone else got into the game. I couldn't see that storyline fitting with the old dude. So I knew some was up, but I didn't know it was going to be what the what it ended up being. Which I was just like, oh, okay. All I right. figured I figured that something was up. I thought originally that the um that the head of the games was related to the old man because uh-huh. it seemed like all of those games were related to the old man. So I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. these niggas over here making these games literally tailored to the old man or whatever. So it's probably they they must be related in some way, which you know I would say was pretty close to the whole idea of him actually owning owning mm-hmm. the whole thing in, in um in a sense, but. I was like, yeah. I, yeah. I except, thought he was a previous winner win. I thought he was a previous winner that just kept coming back and then eventually he was going <laughs> ah. That's what I thought. I was like, oh nigga, you too good at shit. That's you said everything. Like yeah. bro, maybe you you've been here before, but it is what it is. What where, where are y'all land on the on the show at least rating wise? Oh oh yeah, I guess I didn't go over my, my bit. Oh so, yeah, sorry. I kind of had the effect of how, you know, there have been multiple anime and manga series that we have hyped up Player 5 on over the years. <laughs> and then by the time he actually got to it, he was so overhyped that he ended up... <laughs> <laughs> JoJo! <laughs> <completely> disappointed. <laughs> Red so Riot! I, I, so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So Should we keep I calling him out, though? I apologize for one, and I know how you feel. <laughs> but Tokyo Revengers wasn't one. To this it was a hit. That's all I'm going to say. Yep, it was a hit. I found the lane, bro. You got to just have a little slice of life in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I saw that my wife was willing to watch it, the whole thing a second time with me, um, just, you know, just because she enjoyed it that much, I'm like, this must be that good. Okay, okay. You know, um, I eventually ended up having to watch it by myself or whatever, and I was like, "When does it get good?" I was like, "This ain't, <laughs> this ain't all that. You know? <laughs> this ain't for me, Jack." So, um, yeah, I was, I was definitely disappointed by the lack of um, deserve for the hype that it got. Yeah, it wasn't that revolutionary. I mean, it made it yeah. seem like it's the new big thing, but it was just a thing. It was, yeah, I was just like, people getting their first taste of anime. Yeah, that's like, how I pretty thought. much. I mean, like, fuck. It's pretty not a bad much. show or anything. It's just okay. Yeah. Exactly. I, I would give it a good show. I think I think it was a solid watch. To me, it just, like, like Demon Slayer, it's not nothing I've, I haven't seen before. Like, if people were, like, going, like, hey, uh, what, like, you know what I'm saying? I want another show like Squid Game. I would have a good amount of shit to suggest to them. Because I think a lot of it is that everybody can die concept. Like you said, the ties to like dead and stuff. But that whole game concept, like I said, is literally a genre in anime. So that's one. Anybody can die. There's a bunch of animes out there that I can give them with that trope where anybody could die to give you that investment that Squid Game helped you feel where you thought a nigga was going to win or maybe they would find some way around. But no, you're going to die still. Like it's out there. So that's the only reason why. Definitely can. You could argue it's overhyped, but I wouldn't take that away from the show. Like, be like, let's say Squid Game was based off a of anime, for example. That would be an accurate. That would be like one of the things that would go down as a great example of a live action adaptation of an anime. That's how I put it. So I think True. it's still good. True. Um, yeah. Jump into gaming. So 
a quick stuff here. You can start with the Uncharted stuff because I, I don't have much to add there. Um, Gramps. Yeah, I just wanted to add a quick bit that um, they actually are coming out with the movie, the Uncharted movie, in which they're going to have uh, Tom Holland, you know, Spider-Man, as Nathan Drake, and then Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg as mm-hmm. Sully. So, um, personally, um, I feel indifferent to it. Like, I, I played a little bit of the Uncharted games and so forth. Wasn't, you know, um, wasn't amazed by them. It was, you know, there's, there's a lot of other games, I would say, that are similar to Uncharted in a sense. So, you know, seeing that there was a movie coming out about it, I was like, okay, I guess I could see that. I mean, it seems like, you know, it seems like it could work, you know, with actors or whatever, since, you know, you actually have real looking actors in the, in the um, games or whatever. Mm-hmm. My issue was the whole idea of Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg as those characters. Because in my mind, I feel I, I um, envision these characters as older seeming characters, mm-hmm. more mature looking mm-hmm. characters and so forth. Like for, for one, I can't picture Tom Holland as anybody that's not a teenager. I cannot right. picture him as an adult. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. He just has such a baby face. I cannot picture this man as an adult, even though he is 100% a grown man. And then Mark Wahlberg, I mean, I feel like he's not old enough. I feel like he doesn't have an old man, old enough um, guy appeal to him to be able to work for it, even though technically he is, you know, probably like in his 40s or whatever. So technically, in that sense, it works. But that's uh, that was just my biggest gripes. Yeah, I don't have much to add, so we'll just jump to the next one. <laughs> I mean, I will say based on the, I mean, I don't know much about the game period, but I've seen like, I think a couple of picks as far as like the characters and then just knowing Mark Wahlberg and Tom Holland in general. I think, I think Tom Holland, I, I, I see what you mean by that. Like long story short, as far as that baby face goes, it's hard to really put like that, you know, mature, maybe like upper 20s, upper 30s kind of look to it that the character has for Nathan. Uh, but Mark Wahlberg, I mean, I just know Buddy's been reasonably, uh, what would you call it? Like versatile as far as like his, uh, his movie roles go. So I can low key see him pulling that off pretty well, even if the look doesn't match a hundred percent. So I, I, I don't know. I, I just get. I just that's pretty much just me just saying big ups to Mark Wahlberg and like I, I'd be still curious as far as how this movie goes in general because he uh, has that role. So we'll see. But that's just my two cents. Not true. Uh, All right. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> Sora and Smash. Um. I'm, I don't play Smash, but it's nice to see Sora pop up in Smash. That's, I'm, that's where feel, I'm at with it. I feel disrespected. Really? I've, uh, uh, I've only played Smash a few times in my life. The first time I ever played any type of Smash game, I was in college. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you can you can honestly um, expect that I wouldn't be playing Smash, you know, right now. So, you know, mm-hmm. I saw it. And I saw people's reactions. I was like, oh, I guess niggas been waiting on this for a long time. You have niggas who are mad that Waluigi didn't get added into it. But mm-hmm. niggas were... <laughs> He's still not mm-hmm. in the game. Bro, that's what I'm saying. That's disrespectful. My man <laughs> Waluigi, uh, 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 Wario been in that bitch since the first one. That's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and, and that came out when I was like in third grade or something like that. So you telling me it's been like 20 something years and Waluigi ain't get his shot, but Sora, after he waited, made us wait for 10 years just to get a bum ass game. This <laughs> nigga, Damn, ah! all that with Kingdom Hearts 3, bro. That shit wow. insta- instantly went to Game Pass for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Trash. But Waluigi like that nigga that can't even get into the club, bro. Like, they right. forget him. Like, Mario, Wario, all of them going in. And then Waluigi, like, who is you again? I'm trying to get into the club. They, uh, sorry, sir. No Tims. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I just seen. No, no Tims. Yeah. R.I.P. Waluigi. You ain't making it, my boy. No, real talk. Like, why is that a thing, though? Like that, I mean, that's a reasonable question, right? Like, like, why is Waluigi not allowed in? Fuck that nigga. That's why. That's the I only mean, thing I That's can. actually crazy How to really think about. How many people do you know think of Waluigi when they're thinking about, you know, iconic video game characters, though? I mean, you know Waluigi more than you know some of these people in here. Like, some of these characters are very vague. You know, like, oh, man. Oh, without a doubt. 
But that's because, you know, that's because I fucked with, you know, Mario games in general hard growing up. But I mean, so, but that's just it though. Waluigi is like, you know, a concrete like Mario character. It's like, why would Waluigi not be in Smash? I mean, they know? put fucking Wally in that. Sh- like the thing, the characters they put in uh, Smash, like, is one of those things where I'm just like, where are y'all drawing these lines? Like, is it Japan? Is it whatever? Because it's cool to see Sora in there, but then again, I just go like, where's the connection? It is a, that's a Japanese <laughs> game company. Square oh, okay. Enix, that's, the same people yeah. that make Sephiroth, and Sephiroth been in there for a grip. You know what I'm saying? So basically, Final oh, Fantasy yeah. characters can make it. They basically share the same Fair. universe. Fair. They need to bring now, uh, them into Kingdom Hearts then. That's how I would feel about it, bro. They Mario are, World can. would be dope. Oh, you talking about Mario? I was yeah, about to be like, uh, Final Fantasy characters are in Kingdom oh, Hearts. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I was> like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like that. That really is curious. Like they really do got a gripe with Waluigi. I don't know. There might be some hidden history there or something. I mean, I just don't get what makes sense. I mean, did niggas really play with him a lot? I guess that's the thing. You saw about I mean, where the money follows. Still, okay, like, name one other Mario character that you could think of that's not in Smash, but also deserves to be in Smash. Like, Peach sister. Bitch? Yes, they yeah. got Peach's oh, sister wow. in that bitch. So, oh, I mean, like, that's okay. just it. Like, I, do they got no a Bowser else, Jr.? Right? If they got a Bowser Jr. in there, Waluigi should nah, definitely be in that bitch. No, nah, they, def- they, they definitely don't have Bowser Jr. in there. Oh, okay. I'm like, if a junior in it, that's an extra, extra character. <laughs> they might put a Koopa Trooper in that bitch. Hey, uh, Koopa <laughs> Junior is a playable character in oh, Smash Oh, wow. Oh. I mean, wow. I don't know. Well, I, I'm just trying to, I mean, like, like this is Smash Ultimate, this right? Happened, I feel like there yeah. is a reason that's just not public. Like, that's the only thing that makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Waluigi's creator is, is asking for somebody. <laughs> Yo, you remember how they used to put like um, cheat codes into di- different video games to get secret uh, access to shit? What if yeah. what if he's an actual cheat code that you gotta put in in order to play that with no him? One's that out. Nobody's I'm just like, out. what y'all gotta? Maybe they don't have enough to like create a move set for his ass because I really don't know much about Waluigi. Like, I don't know what they would put as his special moves. But to be honest, I would just copy Luigi shit and change the color. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they do that with characters already. So. Yeah. You know, they, they really just own it with them. <laughs> For real. <laughs> so y'all saying that y'all would have rather, have, y'all would have rather that they put uh, Wall- Waluigi in there than Sora? 100%. I don't know what I would miss if Sora wasn't in there. I I wasn't even thinking about Sora being in the game at yeah. first. So what am I missing? <laughs> Bro, they have the Wii Fit trainer in there. Yeah, they do. Oh, they both. That's true. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> That's disrespectful. And, like, my thing is, like, bro, even if you just made him, like, a a Luigi skin, I think that would be, like, okay, acceptable. Yeah. Here's one thing that I find confusing. They have a Pokemon trainer in the the game, right? Where the nigga can pull out, you know, the, 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 you know, famous Gen 1 uh, Pokemon uh, choices or whatever. Yeah. But then they also have, as a 100% completely separate character, Lucario. Right. And Pichu. And, and Pichu was in that bitch. Yeah. Like, what's up with the random Pokemon, bro? I mean, I can see Pikachu. You know, Pikachu that uh, nigga is the face of Pokemon or whatever. So Pokemon Trainer, uh, he can kind of switch between them Pokemon, giving him kind of like his own style. It's like, yo, I can be Squirtle who do like certain things and Ivysaur that do things and then Charizard that do different things. So, I mean, I I get it. It's kind of like why, but a Pokemon is probably their most, their biggest franchise that they have here. I think I wouldn't be ridiculous in saying Pokemon is bigger than Mario. It Um, is. I I actually just watched the um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire game that um, that's RDC World One did, and Pokemon is the highest grossing game so far. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised by that at all. Yeah. Um, I just, I wouldn't be also surprised if somebody was like, oh, technically Mario. Oh, okay, fair. But yeah, <laughs> Pokemon is so popular. Why not squeeze out everything you can? That's I guess cool. Waluigi just wasn't popular enough. Guess not. Jigglypuff in that bitch for Waluigi. Bro, right, Jigglypuff. <laughs> Wallow, bro. The That's bar. The bar. Like, like nigga, uh, what's that nigga? Uh, uh, Minecraft Steve. Yeah. In that bitch. <laughs> Hey, don't sleep. That nigga, no, don't sleep, bro. Minecraft is Minecraft 
is on top. I so get I can that. See them, I can Are see you talking about Ness or the actual game. Minecraft Steve? The, the Minecraft yeah. Steve. <laughs> that the nigga will pull out block. <laughs> he look, he blocky. This is all I gotta say. I get it. Minecraft on top. But the thing that's disrespectful to me is that, like, come on, bro. It's not that hard. It you could have put him hard. in in the first generation of Smash Bros. A hundred percent. That's just Watch. it. I Imagine being the only them. person. Imagine sitting on the bench and like, no way they picked Daisy before me. No right. way they picked a <laughs> random <laughs> plant right. that that shoot fireballs out before me. I'm no way. You just see these lame ass things get up before the fucking piranha plant is getting up before it's you. up there before you. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. As that a whole true. playable character. That's dirty. That's man. fucked up. That's dirty. Then Back you at the, the very end of it and you like, it's cool. Last character, save the best for last. Waluigi. <laughs> Here I come. Right. Sora. 20 years from now. <laughs> 20 years from now, we getting that Waluigi reveal. Niggas like, damn, bro, really? Anyway. At that point, it's just disrespectful, bro. All right. Um, anything else on that topic? All right. Uh, GTA Definitive Edition, we'll make it quick. You getting it or not? Uh, it's 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 a no for me, right now. I'm not buying another one of these extended old games until a new Elder Scrolls come out. I refuse to give them money. I don't like this <laughs> way to do business. I want my new game. Blame it on multiplayer. Uh, you know bro. it's all about the mind. Jake, they're making so much money off. So GTA. much. Uh, Off of eleven year old game, still top selling. That's crazy. Yeah. Bro. They're, they're not letting it go from that multiplayer. Multiplayer did them something different when it came to GTA. I heard the Red Dead multiplayer sucks, but, yeah. but GTA... No, well, the reason Red Dead sucks is because video or consoles can't handle that shit. It takes like two minutes to boot up, bro. Oh, you can't damn. play that game. Oh, well, I didn't know that. I ain't never even tried. Um, it's also pretty boring being a cowboy eventually. Come on, bro. Stop. Shooting motherfuckers? I almost wrangled your ass off that. <laughs> You definitely, you definitely will get bored of that shit eventually. I'm not saying that you know that you'll actually get bored of it or whatever, but you know, we like for different. example, the longevity of being able to play GTA Five online as compared to Red Dead Redemption Two online. You could do like, that it, with horses. It's all well, it is. Would, GTA with horses, right? Like, yeah, that's I would take Red Dead over GTA. Okay. You said what? I would take Red Dead over GTA. I think it's about what you want to do. I would much rather be a cowboy or an outlaw than a drug dealing club owner. Awesome. And that should be funny as hell. If you could like just walk into a bar of a bunch of other online players, point a nigga out, and just be like, I want to duel you right the fuck now. Bro. It'd really be like that. That shit be hilarious. So, I used to play Red Dead with some friends, and just, I mean, I played GTA 2, and it's just more fun to just wrangle and you know what I'm saying? Like, the dude <laughs> on his horse chilling, and you just, yeah, put a rope around him, and then you don't kill him, bro. You just keep packing him out, like, fuck, nah, let him get up. Just when you think he's going, you break him again. Ain't nothing like kidnapping the nigga in a virtual space, putting him on the back of your horse, and riding him to another side of the map and letting him go. Yeah. <laughs> it's disrespect on a different level, bro. In GTA, honestly, bro, I'll be trying to mind the rules of the road. You feel me? I stop at the stop sign. You stop at the stop sign, they hopping out 20 dudes deep. <laughs> shooting you up. All they want to shoot, they, it's like it's not as far. All you're doing is shooting me up. And you got way more money than me. I think that if you play GTA for a long time, it's harder to get challenged by a new player than it is in Red Dead. I could play Red Dead for a thousand years, have all the shit, but if all three of y'all roll up on me and wrangle me, I'm captured, you feel me? Like, I'm stuck in ropes now. There ain't nothing I'm doing about that. You just gotta be, see, you probably get on there trying to be a, a, a law man. You gotta be like, no, bro, I'm about to ruin your online experience. My goal is to, to take you and fuck up your day. <laughs> Go one piece on that shit, bro. Pirate all day. But Pirate. um <laughs> But yeah, I think we all have the consensus of it. It's not worth getting right now. Did you say that too, Gramps? You agreed that you not waste your money? I said that I'll maybe get it further down the line, like maybe yeah. a year or two later. When it's a, it's a gonna nice be cheap. a nice deep discount. Yeah, it, you can't be charging me sixty dollars for games. That you just touched up. I'm sorry. Yeah. Guess how much uh, uh, Elder Scrolls going for on, on on it just released on Switch. Damn, how much? Sixty. 
But see, Nintendo Full don't play price. with prices. You ain't never gonna catch a sale on Nintendo no. store. <laughs> never. never, never. Sale on never. what? We got five games, bro. You better pay the full price, nigga. We, give, we ain't giving you no DLC, bro. We just give you the full shit. Pay that money. Yep. You're not playing. Uh, I'm still playing Mario Kart to this day. It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so NBA 2K, anything to say on that? Uh, uh, I just want to say um, NBA 2K, just the state of, of, of sports games in general, 2K, Madden, UFC, like uh, FIFA, all these sports games, they suffering from the same thing. I, they just really becoming copy paste skins of the next game where they change one or two features, slightly tweak the the physics of the engine, which makes me feel like that they just take the engine, dumb it down, and just tweak it back up over the years. Because right. it's like if your engine was getting better, you would have to make a new game. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but it just pissed me off. And then it's like, yes, because it's competitive, there's an online scene. You get people that drop 60 every year. And it's like, man, as a gaming community, I just feel like we got to get together and be like, let's boycott the bullshit. I know you want to play, but let's boycott the bullshit. Because if we don't, to we just don't keep getting the same bullshit. Just a bunch I, find it interesting, I find it interesting why they never went through a script subscription model with sports games. I feel like it fits the most to them because really... Like, yeah, like you said, there's new features, but really the biggest change is the new roster of people. And they already got to a point where they just, like, were adding that with updates. So I'm just like, why don't y'all just say, fuck it. Here's the monthly subscription for 2K. Here's the fee, like, maybe $20 a month y'all want to be greedy. But really, it should be, like, 5 bucks or lower because you're not giving me that much shit. You're just allowing me to play it online. And then add shit. They should add that. But then also add seasons because I think the only reason people even play these games is because the grind of getting from like a 60 character to a 99. Just soft reset, people. All right, mm-hmm. new seasons coming, soft reset. Ooh. Yeah, you that's know, tough. same deal. Uh-huh. I mean, that's what they do anyway because when you buy 2K22, you yeah. can't transfer your character, you get a soft reset anyway. So right. just make it a subscription, soft reset people every you know year and a half, maybe. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Because at that point, it's like they're you're they're even wasting their own development time. You could just organize that better because now you still got to put out the physical disc and shit. It's like really only do the new physical disc once there's like a significant change in the hardware. Then it's like, here's a new disc and shit. Low key, y'all could just send it to them. Maybe pay, make them pay a little bit extra if you already got the subscription or you pay 60 for that initial thing. Like however y'all want to roll that out. But yeah, I find that interesting that that hasn't been done yet, but overall with the way video games are going i understand we have like a new wave of video games or new generation of how they get played and what's important but i just i don't necessarily want things to go back i'm not like an old head gamer i'm just waiting for the new wave something that's different the next next generation of games just Mm because i think this generation is shit I mean, it started with Call of Duty, and I blame myself for being part of the the crazy <laughs> multiplayer uh, generation. Yeah, and, and <laughs> honestly, you know, if I could go back in time, I wish I would stop myself. This shit trash. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm missing more of is those great single player campaigns for for games because that's where I lean more to. I'm not an online player, but like I miss that. Like that was one of my biggest gripes with GTA. One of the games that are known for like their great single player experiences, so awesome. I felt like that was so lackluster. I was just like, "Yo, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, give me a a game that I can play by myself and it's okay." Like, I don't know <laughs> if you play Outer Worlds, but I'm um, again, I'm gonna uh-huh. go ahead uh, promote that. I think it is the the best single player game I played in many years. Really, I actually finished it, so it's, that I game like does it. go hard. I can vouch I for it, it as a well. Shot. And it's free on Xbox Pass. Yeah. Start paying me, Microsoft. (laughs) Uh, If you click the link in the description below, you can Right. (laughs) (laughs) Check. Um, But all right. uh, Anything else on the NBA sports game shitty genre? Okay. Uh, Demon Slayer Season 2, Jugga. I mean... Long story short, if you've seen Mugen Train, then the first seven or eight eps of this new season now starting, 
You really don't need to check them out. They got, what, two episodes, I think, released so far. And I will admit the very first ep is almost like a prologue going into, like, the Flame Hashira as far as to how he got on the train in the first place. But that's, like, what, three quarters of the ep. And then it's like, whoop, start a Mugen train. Episode two, literally cut and paste a Mugen train. So based on what I'm hearing, it's I, yeah, I think it's like literally the first seven to eight apps is literally going to be the movie itself. So if you haven't seen the movie, congrats. Now you just got to watch season two pretty much because I was even um, talking to um, some uh, other people who like who's deep into Demon Slayer and they were actually like really upset to the sense of like they actually wish the movie either one did not exist or two was completely different simply because since they're making it part of the season two that you could arguably get you know more details as far as to what the movie was really about where literally the movie is pretty much pointless but they, I mean, I'm assuming Demon Slayer was just like, you know, we literally created now the most popular and grossing film of Japan. Let's keep on getting the monies and just okay. plopping that into season two. Or they just yeah. got lazy and just didn't want to get into the new content, even though I'm pretty sure they've already said that the movie is canon, but whatever. Uh, but any case, I mean, to anyone like who was super excited about season two, this is now going to be an incredible letdown coming from the Mugen Train hype to now it's just, oh, let's watch it again. Cool. So, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous when I first figured it out, too. I mean, I figured it out when I found out, too. So it's Are like, any of y'all, do any of y'all read the manga? Is, isn't it finished? Yeah, it's done. It's the done. manga's done. I mean, I, I haven't read it, but the manga is done. So th this, my thought is, is that I think obviously morally shitty choice um, from a money standpoint, like given that the manga is finished. And so you know exactly how much content you got left. And like y'all said, is what is the biggest anime out right now. Yeah. You, you, it's like, yo, we got to milk this cow for everything it's worth at this point. I shitty mean, choice yeah. in my opinion, but I'm not mad at any nigga because they probably got a couple extra mil out of that. That that, oh, yeah. that that free money on the table right there. Yeah. I mean, my thing is, like, um, I get it. But in my heart, I'm also kind of like, if y'all was going to do that, just drop the seven episodes. Let niggas binge that shit. You feel exactly. me? Because you, it's not like it's taking you a huge effort to edit it to the 30 minutes. So I would be like, just drop those seven and then wait for the part two if that's what you're going to do. Instead of making mm -hmm. niggas wait week to week. To rewatch the movie, like, exactly. like what the fuck, bro? <laughs> How do y'all think? Like, the imagine being like the CEO of like Netflix. It's like, all right, Demon Slayer, I'm gonna play y'all like I don't know two billion for uh, fourteen episodes. Okay, just <laughs> sign the check. <laughs> and then yeah. they're like, all right, bro, half of them hoes, we gonna cut that shit up. <laughs> Put that shit out there. You know what I'm like. If you just think, because, like, behind the scenes, that's exactly what happened. Netflix 100%. paid them to make X amount of episodes and got hoed. Somebody yeah. sitting at home punching the screen like, these niggas just got yeah. me for a million. And they got it <laughs> they got it subbed and dubbed already because they did it for the movie. So the they next. literally are just, like, slowly, like, here you go. Here's that episode y'all was looking for. Sorry it took us a while. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we had to go and shoot. We shoot. Yeah, like, what the fuck? That's so disrespectful, bro. Like, I'm just thinking, like, I know that it's not they money, but I would feel like I got hold if I signed the check for that. Right. I feel you. No, I agree with that. Yeah. Oh, boy. I mean, the people who are talking to, I mean, they felt like they got robbed just for the movie ticket price, to be real. So I know. I mean, like, people are feeling hot. So. Yeah. All I'm going to say is that, once again, y'all, community, I know this isn't necessarily related directly to the content of the series, but clearly this new wave of anime is fucking up, bro. Promise Loverland fucked up that season two, and Demon Slayer is still fucking with y'all. So these things that y'all hyped up, <laughs> and we told you was shit. <laughs> they finessing the bag off you, because they and know. They, they, I bet the nigga that wrote Demon Slayer looked around and was like, them niggas, they think it's the GOAT? <laughs> okay. <laughs> What is the check, bro? Because like, <laughs> if I made some shit like that, that's like, all right, this decent. And it went, because you cannot tell me that that nigga thought he was going to get goaded. He yeah. was probably like, okay, this should be decent. Goat status. I'll run up the check too, boy. And Every I'm sure he's happy because now he can just put out whatever shit he wants next. Like the next series he puts out, if he puts out another one, 
is going to run to completion, regardless of how good or bad it is. It's not getting canceled. I think that uh, seasoned anime watchers won't fall for that because we all know that just because you made some fire, your next anime can be trash. Like exactly. that's the majority of people. They next thing they put out kind of sure. garbo. So like, yeah, <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's gonna be it's gonna be these new heads that they ain't been hurt yet. They ain't nobody hurt their soul yet. That they can be like the, the creator of Demon Slayer made this. Let me hop on. Garbage. And you watch 500 <laughs> episodes of that boy. You ain't getting none of them hours back. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, um, that's it for Tito. I think I think we can Dude. close that chapter right here, bro. No matter how many years going by, niggas are still gonna be hurting from bleach. I can right. hear that pain. Oh, man. <laughs> I, was right. like, I was out there watching bleach movies. That's how you know I've got it bad. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all think anime bad? Bleach movies are boo boo. Oh, all right, uh, let's jump to the anime segment. Before we do the Baki review, let's do uh, our favorite moments in Naruto. Um, who would like to kick that off? Uh, I can go, unless somebody else want to take it. Go ahead. All right, uh, so uh, section, our favorite moments in anime. We decided to go with Naruto. Our favorite moments in Naruto. Uh, to me, it's kind of like my arc, but I'll break it down to one moment. My favorite arc is the Sasuke retrieval arc. Is because you that was when you really got to see, like, all right, we're not just focusing on Team 7. We get to see all these niggas that you were like, I wonder what he can do. And everybody turned up. Win or lose, you they turned up. Like, you you was yeah. rocking with every ninja in that fight. You feel me? And then uh, Neji, who was one of my favorite characters up until his death, he went hard. Went against, in my opinion... Probably the second hardest fight out of all of them. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody else beats that guy but Neji. And, you know, he had to sacrifice his, himself to do it. Or at least that's what I thought, which is the reason why this is my favorite moment. Is because uh, when I was a kid watching that, I thought that nigga Neji was dead. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Cartoon Network went on hiatus. They stopped making episodes. The last thing I saw was Neji spilt. And I was like, that's it. And then people was like, yeah, he did, bro. That's over with. And that's my favorite character. But that was the week. I remember that week I found manga. I like went to the library. I ain't had no option. I went to the library, got a library card that day and started searching. I read like four volumes just to find out where I was to finally start reading manga. The first manga I ever met was to find out if Neji died. And I've been reading that shit ever since. Most important part of Naruto. Mm -hmm. That's what's yeah. up, those eight trigrams, 128 palms, bro. Yeah, yeah he was going, that boy was crit walking Ooh. in there. <laughs> I'm going to have to find something different. So, like, before we started this call, I said that tuning in the exams was everybody. But when I said that, what I really meant was the Sasuke retrieval. <laughs> 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 so, 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 I'm going to have to find something different. Uh, I'm going to go. Let me, oh, I was going to say, if you if you can't think of anything right now, I already got oh, no, one. I, I got a moment. This okay. one is from Naruto Shippuden, though. So it technically, from the manga-wise, is still Naruto, but if you count them as separate series, it's Shippuden. When Sasuke summoned Manda to block, deflect that blast from Diodara, to me, was the funniest shit I've ever seen in an anime series. I could not stop laughing, bro. Like, when I saw... That dude go like, oh shit, I'm finna blow up this city or whatever. And then Sasuke was like, all right, bet. And then you just see him summon the god of snakes at that point of time and just like, hey, bro, you gonna be my shield. And then it was like, what? And then <laughs> I was like, oh, I wasn't a fan of Sasuke at all in Shippuden, but that was one of the moments where I was like, I kind of fuck with this nigga for doing that. That shit was funny as hell. So I, I, that's mine. Damn. <laughs> That's so funny. Yo, he blew that motherfucker up. I was <laughs> like, really, Sasuke? Yeah, bro. Summon. <laughs> Summon <interesting. laughs> All right. So my favorite point, um, I think it's because of you know how fresh I was to the whole world of anime and manga in a sense that this moment completely fucked my head up. Cause I, I think we were probably I think we were teenagers when this episode came out with uh Kimi Maru. The whole everything with that nigga, I was on the edge of my seat because you know first you know he came out you know he was whooping Naruto's ass while um Naruto was trying to get out there with Sasuke or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then that nigga Lee came out, mm -hmm. and that nigga 
took a sip of that sip a sip of that sake. I was the like, Henny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, they there drinking wasn't no that? sake and there wasn't no sake in that moment. That was Henny, bro. He was on the <laughs> Henny boy. I, I, I could not believe myself. I was like, no, ain't no way this nigga just got drunk. <laughs> that nigga, that nigga was, was lit, point, bro. and he he out there doing drunken fist, and and I thought that he was about to whoop that nigga Keem in my ass. I was like, oh snap, that nigga Lee got got mad hands. But then that Keem was like, nah, bro, stop, stop playing with me. I'm like, no, bro, out here with the shits. And then I was like, oh, so um, I guess this nigga Lee did. Um, and then next thing you know, out of nowhere came fucking Gara, dude. I lost my shit. I can't. I I kid you not. I lost my shit. Who that nigga Gower came out because in my <laughs> mind, I'm still thinking, you know, oh yeah, Gower, he don't fuck with none of them niggas, man. He doing his own thing, or whatever. He tried to he tried to kill niggas when he uh last time he came out or whatever. So I'm like, there's no way that anybody like Gara or anybody from his village would ever come out. That nigga came out, I fucking jumped out my seat, bro. I keep <laughs> I jumped out my seat. You gotta remember, we're teenagers or whatever. We're not yeah. used to seeing, you know, crazy ass twists like this or whatever all over the place. Right. And um and just when that fight happened or whatever between uh, Gara and Kimimaru, damn. I was, like, <laughs> I, I was literally convinced that that nigga Gara had that, had that fight in the bag. But when this nigga still came out with all them fucking bones coming out of the ground or whatever, and he was he was literally, he, he let's be real, that nigga Gara and uh, Rock Lee, those niggas are actually dead in most universes. Mm -hmm. Because in most universes, Kimimaru didn't fucking die from a heart attack right before he stabbed them niggas. They very oh. insane, make it. Exactly. So that nigga, um, Kevin Morrow, that nigga had definitely sealed a spot in my heart as one of the hardest niggas in the show just from okay. that fight. That's fair. And that was my best moment. Did um, they bring him back for the war? No. Wait. Didn't they? I don't remember. I well, definitely 100% do not recall seeing that nigga come back. I don't, I don't think they did. They might not have. I can't remember. Damn. Yeah. Um, low key, I got like really two tiny ones just because like there's like so many, but these two actually stand out because like just because they're my boys. Um, well, actually, no, the first one is about my boy. The second one I just thought of because it's low key, like one of the most funniest trolls I've ever seen. But anyways, the first one actually was it's it's super low key, it's why it's just why it's hilarious. But when Shino pulled up and said. Yo, I'm gonna win this fight no matter what. In the tuning exams versus um versus Sound Village buddy with the two air palms. And homie was like, bro, you gonna lose no matter what happens. And he's like, but I can use both my hands. And then you see the bugs on Buddy's hands. I don't know what it was, but like that moment just said. Shino was one of the most coldest mother effers in like this entire universe right here. Cause it was just like, it was just like, bro, I literally said you ain't going to win. And it was just like, oh my God, it was just so dirty. It was like, bro, I'm on one side, my buzz on another side, you going to lose. We're like, oh wow, he's going to lose. And we think that homie's going to pull out the back pocket like, fuck, his arms aren't broken. And he was like, why did you think that mattered? <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you, man, crazy. And like that, that was, was when, when I put respect on him, right? Like that was when Shino got the massive amount of hype that he really did deserve, like throughout the entire show. And what we now know, years later, what he still deserves now. Like that yeah. one moment kind of like solidified him in the Naruto verse. So that's why that hit so hard. And then this other moment, which again, super low key. But just the whole Genjutsu troll in Sasuke and Itachi's fight. Ooh, I don't know why, but I just thought that, that was, was so real dope good to me. Like when they first started off and like they're doing the whole Itachi just sitting in the chair, Sasuke always pulling up behind him, that whole interchange. But to find out that whole interchange didn't even happen. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but that moment just like hit. And I was like, oh. Yo, I think that hit for everybody watching that shit, bro. Like that moment was just like. Yo, these that moment not bothered me. <laughs> not off it, not going hard. It, I, I think it's always like hating said, on my nigga Itachi, man. Everybody can agree it went hard, but this was the one time where I started to believe Itachi was a bitch ass nigga. Because, like, bro, what? this nigga Sasuke don't ever use genjutsus. He should not be out here banging with you. Like, we know Itachi for one thing that nigga pulling up, you in a genjutsu all back. <laughs> 
You Kikashi saw that nigga still that's a dream, bro. Kakashi arm still shaking from right. <laughs> Kakashi still got that shit. This nigga rock Kakashi with a finger, and you telling me Sasuke gonna pull up and they actually having a genjutsu fight? I'm like this cap. I'm like this nigga weak as fuck, or this cap gotta be. <laughs> you, know, oh, you know Itachi let him win that fight though in a sense. So I mean I mean you can still argue that if you want to. Nah, because hear me out. Itachi had a rule. Itachi wasn't gonna just let him win. That's what all the other encounters were. Itachi would have let him win if he was strong enough to finish the goal. You get what I'm saying? If he was strong enough to protect himself. So he had to be of some comparable strength for Itachi to let him take that W. That being said. My nigga Itachi had to pull out Susano. He ain't pulled that out for even Jiraiya. My nigga thought his life was going to end that day. Which means, therefore, Sasuke low-key was kind of boxing with that nigga on the Genjutsus. Which means, Itachi must be a bitch-ass nigga. Just wow. A plus B equals D somehow. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how I mean, I think we all can agree Sasuke a bitch-ass nigga. Because literally, right after that fight, he was like, what's up, Killer B? I fought the hardest nigga in the streets, Itachi. And he sat that nigga down. He was like, oh, you ain't your brother a bitch for real, bro. Literally, I mean, the next thing, that's what they happened. They jumped him. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga thought he was clean off that Itachi fight. I beat the swollest nigga in the village. Got pieced the fuck up by a loose nigga with garbage lines. <laughs> Nigga, it's translation issues. It it's translation issues. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> that Damn, bars were horrible. Atanji's not my favorite. When niggas start talking shit about Sanji, I'll, I'll get in there. But... <laughs> <laughs> chicken wow. No, Sanji, Sanji. Yeah, Y'all can talk... The chicken wow. Anyways. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Those are all great moments in Naruto. Next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we jumped to this Bakihama review. We'll make it quick because we, we got tired. We don't have a whole lot of time. But anyway, so Bakihama uh, dropped. They basically created a whole new season after the trash that was season three of Baki. Um, this series followed um, Baki uh, basically on his way to find his, his dad. I do not know if they're going to complete the fight with his dad but i do know what's going to happen in the next season so they're definitely not going to have the dad fight in the next season um we might get a third series for that or they might wrap it up in this one either way first season was baki versus uh biscuit oliver uh once again just more issues with me on how the author portrays black characters in this in this series just a little bit i wouldn't say it's as crazy as Muhammad Ali Jr. was where I was just like, that's total disrespect. Like you wanted to disrespect the Ali name. Mm -hmm. Biscuit is actually, or sorry, Olive, Oliver Olivier, whatever. He's actually based off of a, a bodybuilder. Um, that's who his character is based off of in the real world. I forget what the name of the bodybuilder was, but he's one of the Ronnie, most popular uh, ones. Probably uh, Ronnie. What's his name? Ronnie Coleman. I'm guessing. I think so. Yeah, what the nigga was swole as hell. But when you see the dude, you're like, oh, okay, I see the comparison. So the only issue I had with the season, really, I didn't mind the fights. I knew what was going to happen. Uh, I didn't really like how Baki got the W, and I also I didn't like um, the whole uh, biscuit attracted to this fat ass white woman thing. I just wasn't a fan of that <laughs> setup of like a black man being attracted to this fat ass white woman. Like I was just like. Maybe he doesn't get what this says, but or maybe I was reading into it too much, but I no, just felt like it was it was unnecessary. But you I guess it happened in the manga, so it's not anything really new. And it was made like in the 90s, 80s. I don't know. Baki's old is an old series, so that's true. It is what it is. Overall, in this season is better than season three of of Baki, but he's still putting disrespect on niggas' names. That's that's how I feel about it. No, I, I'm pretty much in complete agreement. I still, I personally still thought this season was a little bit of a letdown, at least compared yeah. to like season what one and two technically, yep. the prisoners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I complete. I mean, I I don't read the manga, so maybe they just didn't explain properly Baki's power ups throughout the season. But at least as far as how the anime portrayed it, I mean, 
long story short, the ending should have been completely different based on how the fight itself was going, if we're being right. real. Um, and then plus, um, I still think they, I mean, that's starting, I mean, it's all because of, I guess, the previous season as far as what happened, but they hype up a lot of characters for very un anticlimactic downfalls. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll pretty much word it like that. Because yep. the other buddy who they were hyping up, uh, Jay, number two, I can't think of his name. Yeah, uh, Che Guevara. Right. Like, they were giving them big ups and, like, you know, giving them quite a this decent This controlled the government. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I mean, like, bro, if we're talking about what he yeah. literally did as far as, like, a global aspect, that's kind of redonkulous. <laughs> like, yeah. that's literally ridiculous yeah. and you would think a body with power like that might as well be yuji ohama right i mean as mm-hmm. far as like the actual clout and like the abilities go like there are not a lot of people who should be able to do that mm-hmm. and uh, i i don't know i just don't think that they i don't even know how to word it right but i don't think they power scaled right or at least illustrated the fights properly to really give the big ups to what these characters really should be able to do um mm-hmm. But no, I mean, there was a few couple of good fights in there, sure. I mean, as far as the character, Bisky was always one of my faves in Baki. And, like, mm-hmm. at least more or less, he got the respect he deserves as far as physical prowess goes. Uh, minus that final fight. And, like, even still, in the final fight, I thought it went pretty good until yeah. really, like, the last couple minutes, if we're being honest. Um but no, it was just, I mean, it, it was, I was expecting more. I was hoping like a really big redemption season compared to last season, but didn't really see it. A um, little, little bit better, but that's like, eh. And then the whole, like, imaginate the whole shadow boxing thing. I think that's, that's a whole other thing. I, I'm right. like crazy, if you will. <laughs> that's that's kind of my issue with it is that um, I, I don't like that they allowed Baki to sort of have superpowers, but like not anyone else. So like, if you notice, like when Biscuit was talking about his muscles, he was like, Yeah, basically, I'm like, dude, what you see is actually like a smaller form of who I really am. I'm like actually constricting the fuck out of my muscles right now. Right. Like, if I was to let them bitches grow, I'd be bigger than like <laughs> you could ever imagine. And then they basically was like, No, nah, he was joking. Like, that's not a real thing. But like, Baki can imaginary fight a grasshopper that's actually beating his ass. Like, <laughs> that to me, I was just like, why? Okay, so you can not give Biscuit super muscles, but you can give the Baki the ability to turn his imaginations into reality. That was ridiculous. But Biscuit has worked just as hard as, as Baki has for his strength. Like, I'm sorry. I that part I was a little bit like, all right, bro, come on, pick a pick a side. Cause I, I see that's that's what they like to do is they like to like put superhuman characteristics on people, but then they'll still confine it to reality. So they don't let it go too crazy. They want it to still seem like it's in the realm of reality, but like that thing with Baki being able to shadow box reality uh was a little bit odd to me. I was just like, what? All right. But to me, what I'm happy for or at least interested to see is the second season because there is a scene there that I'm really excited about um, seeing. But this first season of it, it did not do the same. It didn't give the same hype or or vibe that the first season of the Baki series, the original Baki series did for me. Yep. It was very like it was better than season three. I'll say that. But maybe better than the second half of season two where shit started getting a little weird, mm. but not better than season one or the beginning of season two for the old Baki series for me. Somewhere mm. in there. So I give it like a decent, maybe a decent plus. You could watch it, but I fell asleep through most of the episodes or a good chunk. <laughs> um, I mean, there just wasn't a lot of, I mean, the biggest thing that Baki originally got us in, at least I, for me, for season one was just, the variety of strong characters and fighting styles, and then just a lot of decent, reasonable, but at the same time, a touch of supernatural, arguably, you know, understandably. But like it all, I don't know, it just all coincided with what the series was. It was just like a big throw hands with a lot of characters and a lot of interesting fights. Like that was Baki. But with this season, it was just more redonkulous than anything, but whatever. 
All right. So last topic in anime is fire users and fire force. So this topic is uh, we're going to throw out some of our favorite fire users or popular fire users in anime that we think could survive or dominate in the world of fire force, where if you don't know about the fire force world, it is full of a bunch of people with fire based powers um, that go anywhere from like, you know, weak as shit to uh, moving at the speed of light and time traveling. So, um, who do we got out there? What what names we want to throw out there that we think could hang with the Fire Force niggas? Not who dragged them. <laughs> the power of friendship. That's <laughs> the power of that's friendship. Fair. I mean, I mean, but honestly, true. the but nigga, the nigga can eat fire, true. though, so, you know. That's not even be, that. Easily be best firefighter out there. The nigga has beaten people whose fire should arguably have whooped his fire. Like, he beat a, a god slayer with fire powers or whatever, who I guess is supposed to have some heavenly god fire. He's beating a nigga with dragon slayer fire magic. Like, he can take various types, and, and he's lightning, so I can't argue with that one. True. I mean, oh no, go ahead, P5. You, you know, you good, bro. No, nah, I mean, I was actually going to rattle them off since I think we like we touched on it real quick. But um, I would, I mean, first, the, to agree with Grants with Natsu, um, pretty much for like the power of friendship alone, to be honest. Um, and then I think we said uh, for Goleon and Mary Leona. I think those two would be able to survive. As far as to how much they would thrive is a little bit of a question mark, but as far as to be like pretty up there, they should be at a bare minimum, Mary Leona. Um, simply because I think the biggest issue we're going to have when um, like however many characters we feel like rattling off this list is that the big thing that Fire Force has is not just big firepower, but the fact that they have hands. Yep. And if a fire user that we list don't have hands, I don't think they're really going to be up there at all in Fire Force because it's all about using the fire to pretty much give you better hands, if we're being real. Um, so you kind of need that as a basis if you feel like doing anything. And if we go Leon and Mary Leona, they just about that life. So I see them doing pretty well. Yeah, hear me out. Uh, I kind of have something to say against that. I, I think that Fire Force users, so when we say like, you know, which people would do well in there. I'm assuming we saying who could do well enough to have some position or title of note, right? Mm -hmm. Because you could just be a simple firebender and technically make it in the world. But if yeah. you want to be somebody that the show is following, like you probably need destructive power along with hands. And that is where I draw the line at for Goleon. All we know about this nigga is speculative. You feel me? I think when we talk <laughs> about uh, uh, Mary Leona, you know, yep. Mary Leona, I think she might just make it to almost captain level because like it, it, what Mary Leona did to that demon, I think is the base yep. amount you need to be able to take on a demon level uh, uh, inferno in fire force. Mm. Like if you're not producing a nuclear blast worth of firepower, <laughs> you're not fighting no demon level by yourself. Like your power has to be enough to power an entire city. You know what I'm are, saying? Are you Basically. referring to like that inferno they fought in the first season at Benny Maru's joint? Yeah. Uh, or stronger it was, than that. I can't remember if it's demon class. They say it specifically. Usually the oh, demon man. class for infernos, yeah. if it can talk, is demon right. class. If it got like big horns, oh, it okay. looks okay. like it's special. It's probably demon class, and like the, you literally can't take it out unless you match it. Amaterasu's power, which is effectively a nuclear power station. So like right. unless you can produce a fire enough that can wipe out a whole city, like, you're not messing with none of the captains effectively. Because <laughs> I think at least the top tier of captains can solo a demon. You know okay. what I'm saying? Um, that's why I say Mary Leona just makes it. I think she could probably pump that out. I believe in my heart of hearts for Ego Leon could do it, but we ain't seen we that nigga. Seen it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So effectively he <laughs> really true. would just be like, oh, that's a cold you know, Fire Force dude over there. That's well, Fregolion. You know, we know about him. But even, though we have, even though we haven't seen it, we can assume based off the Salamander choosing him that's that he's I'll stronger say. than Mary Leona. So, yeah. because the Salamander chose that elf chick and Mary Leona would have dropped her ass because she was out there. Mary <laughs> Leona was out in the world and she would have bodied that bitch head to toe. Like, you know what I'm saying? I that's think the fair. Salamander was like, yo, Mary Leona, I'm good. 
I, mean, like, I agree, but I mean, well, that, that, okay, I think that also depends on if Salamander would like technically count as Regoleon. I feel like if it does, though, you could still argue that just out of firepower alone, though. But Salamander firepower don't sleep, so. I think that it, it, Salamander does not choose who it chooses based on your ability because uh, it chose that little girl and Mary Leona was stronger than her at that time. I think it's about that loved by mana thing which there is no way to quantify either the narrator of the story fuck with you when you love by mana or you not until they or you give you us know. some way to quantify that or you know lo- or you or, know gives you a wink is you know close. <laughs> if, 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 if you know <laughs> Yo. okay you can have one yeah hey get to get to <laughs> if i had to put a fire user in here i mean i think uh ace really uh, I, do, I have not seen his upper limit, but I do know One Piece upper limit, mm-hmm. and I know that he is uh, considered good in One Piece. He did get snaked by the OG Triple OG. You feel me? Um, I but I That's think I, I was think he would be about. like a high captain level, but I would think he's somebody you respect. Okay. Yeah. I was going to toss out a Kanu. I was already in the One Piece realm. I felt like uh, his fight versus Aokiji split the temperature of an entire island like drastically change it half of it is ice and the other half of it is like fucking magma or some shit i thought it's on so, fire that's true yeah that's true so at that point i think he he at least has the scale to to make him of note i don't know if that put him at captain class or not but that magma stuff i also feel is is a unique power in the fire force world as well so I, th- I think that will also give him an edge just that. Not only the feats, but like his magma ability. I think they, the way that they write shit in Fire Force, I can see that being finessed into more than what it is in One Piece right now, yeah. which is just magma. I agree. Niggas that can use magma. So I'm going to go ahead and put like a magma bender like Bolin. Mm-hmm. I think they would do good just because, like you said, based on the way Fire Force powers work, I only see like a few people being able to stop magma. They probably be like, "Yo, yeah. that's hot." This dude, Earth, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's hot, bro. I ain't that's know what's hot. Man. Yeah, there, there is a few people that I think would be some solid niche picks. Uh, I think Natsu. I haven't seen his power. I don't know if he has the power to be up there with some of them dudes, but I definitely, the ability to eat fire makes him a niche pick. Like, yeah, we definitely yeah. bring Natsu with us, you know? Um, no, I, I think I think Natsu has evidenced of it, at least scale-wise, because at this point, wherever we're at, they even in their, like, continuation series, they, they are fighting dragons. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's they've technically beaten dragons who I guess are, like, you know, at least continent level, I want to say. Okay, then that's fair. That's what I'll say. You, or, you or sorry, not continent level, level, but like, you know. Country? Massive city, yeah. Country, maybe big city level for sure. If um, you had that, you're, you're solid. You made it. Yeah. What about my boy Endeavor? The shittiest hero in the world. Y'all got <laughs> oh, for sure. He's he's out there uh, politicking with um Shinra or whatever the fuck, Arthur and them. He's not on their level, but he is their level. Uh, so, rank, but this is what I want. In my mind, every every time we've seen him, right? So, if you're going off Endeavor, you're going off what you've seen to him. But I'll mm-hmm. argue this: in the in the Fire Force world, them niggas have zero restraint, and we can see that through Benny Maru. Benny Maru will gladly fuck your whole city up and be mm-hmm. like, "I killed the nigga, didn't I?" You know what I'm saying? But in the My Hero world, Endeavor is always conscious. Like, I have to limit the damage I do. If he was in this world and could just let go, you don't think he'd be up there? My counter is. He overheats. Ah, that right yeah. there kills him. That's fair. Like, if, that's, if that's taken that's away, fair. yeah, for sure. He's up that's there. He can he can go toe-to-toe. But for the fact that he overheats, if he carries that to the Fire Force world, he's, like, below, below. Like, niggas is like, I don't need that an issue, bro. You overheating, yep. nigga? <laughs> <laughs> that's why Shoto is a better bet in that world than him. Same okay, bet. But Shoto? Shoto would be fair. I just don't think Shoto fire get hot enough. But that, that nigga barely though. cooking with grease. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing, that though. Captain Even if the nigga it. decided to use his ice, that nigga probably would be able to extinguish um, anybody that's trying to use fire or whatever. They, they got niggas that can do ice powers. He he yeah. wouldn't be uh, unique in that, that world. That captain with the trumpet, though, was unique. I, I fucked with him. That's why I would see it potentially working, is that temperature He's like regulation. He's the of that world. 
for real. <laughs> the trumpet the dude homie? with the trumpet, he's really yeah. like the Asta of that world. Hey, I'm not better than you, but <laughs> you'll <fight>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit ain't left, homie. Uh, I got another yeah. one that niggas probably wouldn't really think about much, but technically he does use fire in a sense. The nigga Escanor. Because the nigga can uh, create a mini sun you at the end of his, that on that the end of his blade. It's okay. not even, he gets his power I mean, from the sun. You could exactly. argue that that is some fire finesse. So it kind of makes you wonder, not, like, if he gets hotter, yeah. does, would, that even make him, would that make him even stronger? That's the that honestly sound like a fire force power. Like I would give yeah. it to him. Like if somebody in fire force was like, "Yo, as the sun get higher, I get stronger." I can see that power. I've seen I way weirder in fire force. Yeah, right. I say he's in, and I say he's a top tier character. Oh, it gotta be a cat. <laughs> gotta be a cat because he's on the way. Yeah, can he body <laughs> Benny Maru? Oof. I don't know. At I noon? Mean, at high noon? At high noon? No, no. He he's got, one he poking got... niggas. High noon, bro. Uh, you said high noon, he dropping them? No he's content. one poking niggas at high noon, bro. <laughs> Everybody. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think Benny Maru could survive until high noon is over. For sure. <laughs> well, no, that's no. all he got to do. over, I feel survive. like he could, put, he could take him out before he gets to high noon, potentially. But once that nigga's at high noon, I, I don't know. This is why I put it Bruh, for I, as that, tough, for Pride. Like, I don't know how far or if you watched any episodes of Seven Deadly Sins, but I'll just say this. At one point, the main character was gone. And the main character at that point of the show, to I think most people watching it, was carrying the team. So we didn't. So then the biggest bads that fucked him up the first time show up for a war. This is the moment, like, we were like, oh, the heroes are definitely going to get bodied. Pride single-handedly turned the tables on these niggas, bro. Mm, all these niggas. Yeah, that, without it being High Noon, mind you. That's true. That's <laughs> true. High Noon came later. Once he got to High Noon, he bodied the main character. That's just yeah. some shit I ain't never experienced in anime before. I, I got to respect on his name. It was yeah, the full, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, the only thing that could argue is that I would still say Benny Maru got better hands technically as far as like martial arts go like with the actual power and speed so that's the only way i could see it simply because of who pride is as a character that is the only reason why i could see him losing just gonna be like oh yeah benny maru oh you not pride so you're not gonna smoke me like that mindset alone can get him smoked but I, I worry, and I feel like a lot of my hype on Benny Maru is a speculation, because it's like, you see this nigga go crazy, but then you also got to remember the whole time, he is a third and second generation mm -hmm. fire user, and nine times out of ten, he's actually just using one power. Like, like he can he can turn off fires, too, and we just never see him turn off fires. He's just like, nah, I'm going to beat your fire with more fire. He really out here showtowing niggas like, I'm body in the world, but I haven't used my other power set yet. So that's what made me stop and be like, what else can he do? And I got a question about this Espinar dude. If you black out the sun... Like 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 you cover it, one. You cover it with smoke. Does that affect <laughs> I think he that, created one. There was on no the end of his sword. Of of his spear, he creates a little sun. And Bini Maru could turn that off with his canceling power that he never That's uses. True. Hear That's me out. But true. if he decided to use That's it, true. he could cancel that out. That's Black true. out the sun with a bunch of smoke and body this nigga head to toe. That might be a great follow-up uh, yeah. discussion. For yeah. sure. But I can concede yeah. your argument that Benny Mara would win more times than Escanor based off of what you said. Yeah. Go but ahead, I, go, he's definitely go captain ahead. class in the Fire Force world. For sure. Though. Go ahead. Make that a versus for the week. We're going to say <laughs> <laughs> Benny Maru versus Escanor oh, under oh. Fire Force rule mechanics. Because, like, the only thing is that if Pride is getting off even one hit, you could argue that's a one-hit KO or death. Absolutely. Maru. I if think he hit that nigga once, he did. Yeah. <laughs> so, but Benny Maru got hands. So, I mean, that's why it's tough. I don't know. Yeah. Any other fire users to toss out? Um, I'm definitely not putting any um, um Avatar niggas in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fair. The fire. Yeah. And I don't think they could react fast enough. Speed wise, yeah. I don't know if I've seen that. Fire is fast, man. There's a show um that I used to watch, um that I I it's kind of small. I don't really think people watched it. 
what the fucking name was it? It was about these uh, magic users, and they had a specific element, and then the main character's element was wind, but he was from a clan of fire users, which was, like, weird. Or he was, like, the last wind user out there because they all got killed. Um, and I know that sounds like Avatar. They sure do. <laughs> but, it, but it was an anime version of Avatar and magic instead of bending. And then, like, they had, like, this fire clan, which was... Uh, which was like they had was this girl who made this fire sword. She was really strong. I keep wanting to say Subasa Chronicle, but I know for a fact that's not it because I know what Subasa Chronicle is. I have to remember the name of this anime, but it's an anime out there with a decent fire user. Just can't think of the name right now. Gotcha. Question. Mm-hmm. Do y'all think that the black fire that the Uchihas use would be able to rock <laughs> niggas? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to just say, let's, put, let's call it, let's say Itachi. Itachi in this world only able to use fire jutsu is a fire uh, based jutsu. Oh, big ass fireball and a fire that can't be put out. Cause she, cause I'm just speaking purely on Amaterasu though, because I already uh, know the rest of that shit is trash. I mean, I think that them niggas physically could compare. I think they actually probably physically stronger. Naruto ninjas are physically stronger than Fire Force niggas. So I think physically he would compare to the world or any Naruto nigga that can use Amaterasu would compare to the world. Uh, Amaterasu, uh, it would body a lot of low-level niggas. I don't see it bodying any captain because most captains could probably raise their internal temperature and just be like, well, I'm on fire. I'll just keep this up for seven days until this shit go out. You know what I'm saying? Because like most of these, or like the higher end captains are producing nuclear level temperatures. I think they could sit in a, a Amaterasu and chill until that shit go out. Yeah. I would feel like his his defining attributes in the Fire Force world is going to be his Itachi-ness and not his fire powers, if that makes sense. Like if he re- uh, receives any, re- like just based off the power on any ninja, rank wise definitely could be a regular soldier in the thing. I could see Itachi holding a little bit more rank but only because he's Itachi. Like, he found a way to finesse that power enough to where he got notoriety for his ability to use it, but not necessarily because of the power, if that makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would agree. yeah, I think he might just knock more niggas out with his hands than fire. They yeah, fire like get the, a little ridiculous in that show. I mean, just like the captain of the, uh, of the, um, of the main character, right? I yeah. can't remember Nick's name. Oh, but, right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, because the nigga definitely doesn't use fire at all. At all. He used the right. things. Okay. But they, they could actually like, decent. They could do a Habana finesse, maybe, and allow him to, to season some Genjutsu in there because they kind of gave her it's not really Genjutsu, but like, you know, yeah. the uh-huh. her power kind of her Yeah. So potentially he could keep that uh I did just Google just out of curiosity to make sure, but they did list um, as far as fire users go in anime, um, Genryu Sai from Bleach. Ooh, and like low key, I, I think that's a good option. Can y'all hear? I can't hear. Yeah, we can hear. Oh, okay. Yeah, you good. But no, as far as like Yamamoto from Bleach, yeah. As far as him banging in Fire Force, easy. One. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. Oh, now you got Echo. Yep. yep. Ooh. Roy Mustang, no chance. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. Uh, let me look. I don't even watch dude from Blue Exorcist. Somebody else had to talk about that one. Nah, I was. You, you, he a he a makes it. Uh, I think but that nigga like, like, might be a number one captain. I mean, like he he went in in the tourney, sure. But it's like, well, I mean, if you really count him as the fire user, sure. I mean, like he ain't about that life. I, I mean, I. Out. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I mean, okay, since he combined with the dragon, okay, like, fair, fine. Like, he pretty much is the dragon of the darkness flame, right? Okay, fair. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just wouldn't see him as, I don't know why. I just don't see him as a fire user. I mean. Uh, he spent the majority of the show not using fire. I could see that being a solid reason. Um, I mean, if anything, I see him more as a swordsman, if we're being real. But anyways. Um <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, as far as, like, the physical prowess of PA, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, he would do mad work. You know who I think would actually do a solid job in the fire world? And I don't even know if this nigga fire is real. Um, Sword homie from uh, uh, Mugen Train, Demon Slayer. Oh, the flame I don't, 
Yeah, I don't think I don't even know if his fire is real. Not sure. I mean, that it's, su it's supposed to not be. Yeah, I thought I it was thought. all illusions. Yeah. It's hey, just, it's all, it's, it's a fire technique, you well, know? Let me but put, it's like the same my boy thing as like there. Mantis style or monkey style, you know? You're not a monkey or Mantis, but... I'm going I'm to put him up there just for the respect. I think with a speed, power, and fake fire, he could at least be a solid member of the team that niggas could rely to kill Infernals. He wouldn't be killing Demon Infernals, but, yeah. you know, I like that guy. <laughs> you better have to go and get the, the ace treatment. Like that guy. All right. Anything else? Nope. All right. Time for the best part, man. Man, you got highlights. Uh, just real quick before we jump into the popular series, put some respect on. Are there any uh, manga series you want to toss some light respect on before we go in there? Um, is we where I talk about Tokyo? Yeah, probably. Okay. Sure, because, you know... Uh, <laughs> So first thing I want to say, I feel like I said it two or three times, but I'm going to say it one more time. Uh, respect to MGG. He been saying this for a grip. Get on Tokyo Revengers. I kept hitting the snooze button, but guess what? I finally woke up. Shit, finally. <laughs> um, and it, as it stands, I think I'm deeper in the manga than him now. You know, yeah, real yeah. fiend status. <laughs> um, right now they on the Three Deities arc, which is a, a arc where effectively you find uh, three separate gangs with leaders who each have equal power to Mikey. Mm. Um, and so this mm. is, and the reason I bring this up as being interesting to me is because, and I, I this was uh, in the manga as I read it, they were like, yo, this is the final arc. But the way the shit seemed set up, it seemed like they could go one of two directions. They could be like, all right, we're done. You seen it. We went against niggas that are strong as Mikey. Uh, or they could be like, there's a nigga above them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, <laughs> you could honestly keep this going. Uh, right. It would probably power creep really quickly. I think one of the discussions we had is like, I mean, in a delinquent world, the power creep is like, niggas got a gun. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> no matter how tough you are, one bullet, you're done. You're out of there. Wonder. And I just like, yeah, I wonder, like, especially they've increased the amount of niggas getting shot dramatically. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. dudes is getting shot now. So it's like, what do you what do you do? One thing I want to see out of this deities are, first of all, I like that the deities, at least the one of them that they explain, he comes from a different place. So there's no bullshit like, yo, where was this nigga when Mikey was out beating niggas up all the time? Oh, that nigga was in Brazil. You know what I'm saying? And he a gangbanger from Brazil and came here. I'm like, bro, you know what they got to do now? They got to bring the Chirac niggas oh, through. Yeah. They, they, they got to. <laughs> I would be head over heels if they was like, wow. Duh. There are these new game bakers. <laughs> <laughs> you well, <laughs> uh, they don't let cheese in stuff. <laughs> that would kill me, bro. If Tokyo Adventures <laughs> brought GDs into the thing, I favor them. You gotta go croak no basket with her, bro. When them black right? motherfuckers came from the whole other area to try, that's what they gotta do, bro. If that's they do that, cool. at this point, Tokyo Revengers is low-key starting to shape itself into a sports manga of gang banging. Like, that's really <laughs> how they, they, they really play it that way. Like, yo, this is wow. the sports manga for gang banging ass niggas. And, you know, we'll see how it go. I'm, uh, I'm hyped for this. Get any stronger? Huh? Takamichi get any stronger? Huh? Oh, but he got more heart, <laughs> though. Like I guarantee he got more heart, this arc. You gotta have heart if all the niggas you facing just as strong as Mikey. Like, the, you, bro, you, this is my thing. They showed the background of like this nigga from from um, Brazil, and his background so fucked up. Like, this nigga need therapy, bro. Like, you're not about to talk jutsu this nigga down. Like, you know I mean? like this is a situation where I'm like, bro, how do you talk somebody with years of trauma down? And there's no way. If Takamichi do that, it becomes officially unrealistic. Like, this right. nigga got superpowers now. <laughs> you know? But that's all I got to say. Three deities are uh, put some hype on it. I don't know where they're going. Maybe it's over. Maybe it's not. Well, one thing I'm going to touch on after the chapters today also is Hunter, Hunter's Guild Red Hood. Um, it is starting to catch a, a story. I'm praying that it doesn't get canceled because now I'm fucking interested. Like, nah, the. Man. 
the show has like developed like first of all i remember talking about it being based on grim's fairy tale but they kind of like took the fairy tale aspect and made it real because now yeah. there is a book that dictates yeah. how niggas lives go and i have no clue where they're gonna take the series after this but i i'm praying it doesn't get canceled that's all i'm gonna say yeah. like if you haven't started reading hunter's guilt uh, I think we're. Per, per, I did a should you read kind of, but I might end up doing a separate one for it. But uh, getting close to twenty chapters, I would say that I would probably lean towards recommending someone pick it up. Not the best series ever, but definitely an interesting read for me right now. No, hundred percent. I'm pretty much in the same boat as you. I just caught up this morning, and the scary thing is that. They're progressing now very fast, so it kind of oh, yeah. that that warning sign is there that they might be wrapping up, kind of like F and Candy Flurry. So right. it's sad, but I, I can see it now, which is unfortunate. So uh, I'm praying, I'm praying it keeps going, but they just they took a huge left turn with the plot just now. So I, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. All right, anything else before we jump into the pops? All right, popular series. Let's start with My Hero Academia, since everybody here read that. Stars and Stripes. God. Power. All I'll say before I even get into the Stars and Stripes shit, I read My Hero Academia for all for one. That's what I've learned after these past few chapters, bro. Because just seeing like how all for one actually thought of the fight as on a global scale, to me was like good to see like i was glad that this nigga was like yeah they thought that i was just thinking about japan but like no i started fights like everywhere so so niggas couldn't come and help like i was like that is someone thinking on a different spectrum than the rest of these niggas in this world so i gotta put respect on his name for that the second part is just stars and stripes herself like that power to just name something and then be able to set whatever rule to my understanding that she wants on it is crazy that's bust she was just like yeah air you don't exist 10 feet away from me like <laughs> huh no like, she said a thousand meters oh there you go yeah that's, Dude, that's a that's nuts that's for donkey yeah. girl. i i just am like yeah I, i'm glad she pulled up thought it was dope and the fact that like once again, with the My Hero, you know, quirk limitations, she, I, what was it? She can only use two of them, right? She can only set two mm -hmm. rules, and she sets one on herself. So it's like, damn, that kind of sucks. But I'm like, damn, I wish her plus That's ultra was broken. like three, four rules. You feel me? Come um, on, bro. You know she got one. On, on that You wouldn't be the top hero if you ain't had a trump card to pull out. Right. You know what I'm saying? She's <laughs> like, oh, trump card. I got a third. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> Like, cause I'm like, bro, I just find it hard in the My Hero world to be like, yo, I'm at the top of my game with nothing to pull out. We see every nigga pull something out. Even Lock Drop done pull some shit out, bro. Right. You, you got, you, she got, she better have something for him. But, I but mean, then like, again, would have worked that strong, she could have been coasting. I mean, that, that's just what I'm trying to say, though. I mean, like, there's, I mean, we, I don't think we are, but based on how y'all, y'all talking right now, I mean, like, I still feel like y'all still not seeing the full brokenness of breaking reality, though. Like, why does she need something in the back pocket when she could set a two rules, whatever she chooses, on reality? Her quirk is like, how is that not broken enough? I mean, the way I, she's it, been using it to me is like, there's still holes. You get me? Like, there's still ways around it, even though with that, and it seems like you know. If you're attacking her with, like, let's say there was, like, five top tier. Like, here's why. This is an easier one instead of giving an example. The fact that she still bows down to All Might tells me that it's still reasonable to beat her. You get what I'm saying? Because from that quirk alone, I was like, to me, that's better than one for all All Might. With all so. those extra quirks being added, sure. But All Might is just, like, bow flex and shit. He's just pure strength. Why can't the rule be Tomura Shigura or what's his name? Sorry, to to Toshinori Yagi. You have no powers yeah. for the next two hours. Like <laughs> I think uh, one of two like things must be true. Um, so, like, the reason I don't think her power is actually that great, I think it's kind of meh. Uh, one, she has to say it, which means she literally has to think about everything she does, right? She That's can't true. just go up and stick a nigga in the face. Like, she got to think about it. 
Right. Two, she got to say it, which means like, like think about a complex sentence. The more complex your sentence, the longer it takes, the quicker somebody fuck you up. Mm-hmm. And then and lastly, uh, like your speed, super speed still beats it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah I'm That's just faster. That's the key to that other rule, though, with pretty much upping her own stats. But she's not so, faster than all might. You know what I'm saying? I mean, agreed. I mean, like, right. I mean, like, we're, we're pretty much still setting the all might cat being stronger. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, that I understand. But, I mean, that that just goes but to my own, I guess, what, what do I want to call it? My own philosophy that if you have a certain level of physical prowess, it don't matter about your opponent's skill. Because if you're right. faster than them by, like, blindingly so, like, like Flash, for example, it don't matter. Yep. If you like strong like Superman, as soon as you get a hand on them, they dead, they lose, so it don't matter. But that's just my own philosophy. But in, in the sense of like minus that, I mean, it's still broken. I mean, you're still, I wonder the you're limits still just breaking and defining reality. So if you have that one broken reality rule, pretty much being that you're already above normal, or at least of almost, not Superman caliber, but you know, very, very strong, very, very fast caliber is one of your broken rules. And the other one is just being that key to just like finishing the job. It's like, fuck, like what else can you really ask for? Uh, so I wonder what, there has to be some limit to her ability. I don't think she can just manipulate reality because if she can just purely manipulate reality, she's she's not a good hero, right? She could have just, instead of saying atmosphere disappear, she could have said for a thousand meters, all the atmosphere go inside of Shigaraki's body. A thousand square meters of atmosphere in your body will blow you up from the inside out. You know what I'm saying? Like she could have said atmosphere turn into steel. Boom, this nigga in a thousand square meters of steel brick crash into the ground. Like there's so many options you can choose that if she's choosing that, I'm like, yo, either you're stupid or your power got some limitations we don't know about. Because she could have been anything. I would lean more towards stupid because it's My Hero Academia. They just, right. they have not shown me any of the <laughs> You could right. you know, argue the whole like shown it maybe not get as like violent at least as often. But I mean, like I mean, the simple fact of her placing the rule of placing a hand on the body and like help me heart stopping if he makes a move. That I think is already kind of showing how broken it is. Like everything else, you could argue. I don't know. You can only really control the physical properties of what you touch or give it commands. I don't know, something like that. Mm-hmm. But as far as the whole placing a bot, like hand on the body and literally saying that your heart gonna stop if you move, that that, that goes like just above that kind of you know limit that you would kind See, of imagine. But then so this I, becomes I don't know. my my other issue that if Shigaraki pulls the bullshit that we know he about to pull, well, I'm technically not Shigaraki. Yeah. I'm like that means that like yo like. Like there, then that there has to be these limitations to her quirk that we don't know because to me that's a goofy one. That'd be like if I'm like, yo, I touch Jugga and this this nigga explode or something. He like, huh, well, technically my name's Chris Hemsworth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what, bro? Like, you know, like, and if that's the case, why does the atmosphere listen to you? Like, like you know what I'm saying? There are so many issues I have with this quirk that leads me to believe it cannot be manap- uh, uh, reality manipulation. Or else it's subjective to her opinion. And can you sway her opinion by having an internal monologue about you not being Shigaraki? Right? Tell me Shigaraki, not even his real name. What? I guess. But you know what I'm saying? Like, there's some. <laughs> no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I see I your make, argument. I just think it's a consciousness thing in this particular situation where it's like. Clearly, there's two consciousness in this nigga's body, and one is in control right now. So I think if like Tomura took his body back and she did that, that nigga would be have his heart stop. But like it seemed like one for all is or all for one is the the main person right now. So I don't know. This is I, I'm gonna make a quick tangent and we can get back to this. But what you just brought up here is what's going on in Undead Luck uh, that I really like reading. Because there's a character in Undead Luck, the main character, he has immortality. That's his power. It's undead. So he just can't die. They cut him up, whatever. He just regenerates instantly. For most of the series, his struggle has just been that. And his weakness has been, if you cut off my head, like, you know, that's usually the assumption of where your soul is. So he ended up reaching this point in development where he can put his soul in any part of his body. So he literally could, like, shoot a finger out and create a person out of that because he just like removed the limitation. 
I don't know how much this relates to what we were talking about, but it just came to my mind when we were talking about consciousness mm -hmm. and all of this other shit. And I felt like calling it out. Shout out to Undead Luck. But that's why, like, when you said that, I immediately was like, oh, well, in Undead Luck, this nigga just be putting his conscience anywhere. So it is kind of, like, arbitrary in a way. Mm -hmm. It's really how you define what that means. Mm. Fair. So here's, my, here's also my issue with her power. So just like what Player 5 was saying, I don't like how your power um, is, is dependent upon any of your five senses. Because as soon as you take away that sense, you no longer have a power, right? So, like, okay. literally, if her power was as reality bending as what Jugga says, then she can literally make herself like, um, she can make herself like, um, what's his name? Um, is it his name Gojo off of um, oh, Jujutsu Kaisen or whatever? Yeah. Uh -huh. and if anybody comes within a certain distance of me, X happens. Or she can literally make herself a a death note. She can right. say, "Boom!" Now I don't have to say anything in order to in order for my power to be activated. All I gotta do is think it, right. and boom, mm -hmm. she thinks. That's fair. This yeah. nigga's gonna die. This nigga gonna die. This nigga she gonna die. Goofy. All she gotta do is just think it. She just walking down the street. Death, 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 death. And mm -hmm. niggas will be dying all over the place. If she wanted I'm gonna chalk that up to being a woman in shonen once again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they give these niggas I mean, go powers and hold them shits back heavy. That's one. Two, uh, I totally think the points you brought up is super fair. Once again, to add to the stupidity of the My Hero universe, why the fuck does she not have one for all? Bro, like to me, that is a logical success. You could finally give that power to a goat nigga. Yeah. Uh, knowing the rules, like, oh, she would have died soon. Maybe that's why it would have fucked it up. But All Might didn't fucking know that shit. Deku just figured that shit out. You feel me? So I'm just like, yo, I, All Might with this legacy protector bullshit is wild to me, bro. You literally could have handed this bitch that power. She could have ended that shit a long time ago. Facts. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I'm gonna that's give you this power. Her shit probably would have boosted up to just like, like Graham said, you think it'd happen. Right. And like, we don't need her to keep the quirk for a hundred years. She could have banged all for one like that. Hey, she probably, oh, well, I got all for one. Yeah. Uh, Wherever that now. nigga is right now, he's dead. And then all for one of them. Done, bro. They ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, at the end of the day, Two niggas that's on bullshit, Julius and All Might. All Might cared about his legacy. That's why he gave his power to a fanboy. And yeah. Julius was like, I'm, I'll watch these niggas fuck up. Let that nigga lich kill him. <laughs> wow. Horrible, bro. But no, I, I'm fucking with the quirk, bro. I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Like you guys said, you guys have brought to my attention more of the loopholes than I thought when I first saw it. But like, I still think, like, it makes sense why she's number one. The other part I wanted to say is, I think it could also be, I don't think he's ever going to go this far, but if he did, it could be foreshadowing for how someone like Ari could look in the future. Because I feel like Ari's power is similarly broken, and, like, if she ended up putting in the work to, like, develop it, I could see her being a Stars and Stripes type of a character where she she runs shit in an area, for sure. I could see Ari doing a Gone-type deal. Where she mm. re forwards herself to her peak power, ah. just to like blow somebody down and go yeah. back. That would be fucking hard. Like I would watch a show with the next generation of kids in it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I can uh, see it. So we got some some other questions here. So will stars and stripes be killed right now? Let's answer that since we're already on the stars and stripes thing. What do people? Out of there. She dead. Wow. I think she should have been dead as soon as she touched that nigga Sugar Rocky. She would have been like, Sugar Rocky, he just sort of slapped the shit out of her before she even finished her statement. It's not like it's not like he he got paralyzed just because she gave him a quick shoulder bump. That's she true, hit him yeah. into the ground. She got close enough. Well, all he got to do is just touch her. Well, you know, I don't think she's going to die. I should reverse my cap. I don't think she's going <laughs> to die, but I definitely don't think she wins. I think she was brought here to be a new mentor for Deku. So you said she ain't finna get her powers taken. Um, that might happen. I'm not sure. Uh, I think that, I mean, in my personal, I, he makes choices that I don't agree with anyway. I think that all of these niggas have enough powers. They don't need a new one. But I guess if he gets some powers, I don't feel like the threat increases. It's just like, oh, an insurmountable odd is 
equally insurmountable now. But I mean, stacking that well, power. That's the ultimate power. What else this nigga has is who, gonna who was going to stop that nigga without it, bro? No, that's big facts. You're, you that's know what I'm fair. saying? Is you, you made an infinitely tall wall infinitely taller. <laughs> Nobody was going to climb that bitch. No way. Like, uh, <laughs> well, who was no? Him? But that's the thing, though. Literally, his wall, well, the, the one boulder that can knock down his wall was anybody who had the uh, one for all power. All, yeah. so all, all Mike did to his ass. So he doesn't want Deku to mess around and get bulked up and do the same thing to him. So he was like, yeah, if I just get this one last puzzle piece. I'm complete. Can't nobody but that's not it. A I'm going to just think Deku finna die right now. Boom. See, he did. Now, his one last puzzle piece now. was switching bodies, right? Yeah. He was like, yo, if I get a new body, I can definitely bang with All Might. And we can see that, let's be real, Deku is probably as good as All Might was, if not getting close to getting stronger, at least when he does his foe 100%. That being said, like, I think maxed out Shigaraki would be All Might. You get what I'm saying? All Might is nowhere near close to any other hero, which means it's only Deku that had a chance to stop him, period. And then it wasn't really a close cut. Mm -hmm. I don't think adding this quirk does anything relevant because... That we see so far. It might be a key to some other part that's not necessarily battle-related. Now, it's you know what's crazy? It's because this nigga knows how to use the power better than her. You're right. Well, that's the reason. MGG mentioned he'd be playing 4D chess, and we was just talking yeah. about how she's stupid with that power. Exactly. Big he's going to turn into him, he goes turn himself into a death note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. Or I, he could touch Deku and say, oh, your quirk is transferable by, far, by force. Yeah. That would probably be the most important thing he uses it for. Mm. I can take this quirk by force now. Mm. If he does that, then it's just real crazy. I'm like, all in all, I don't know where the fuck this shit is going. <laughs> That's really the summary from this whole discussion is like, if he gets it, yeah, like you said, he's just more God on God. And then I'm just like, once again, I get that the other worlds are going through, you know, threats as well because all for one set it up. But at this point, if he gets stars and stripes quirk, it's now a global issue. If it wasn't a global issue before, they can't make me think that this is not a global issue. Every fucking hero from every country need to be pulling up to Japan or right the fuck now. That's true. I, I, I don't I don't get it. That's I'm a I ain't gonna cap, bro. If you hit my line like, hey man, all for one just got uh got stars and stripes court. I'm who? Stars and stripes. Oh hey, bro, stop calling me, bro. <laughs> and I'm getting <laughs> off the grid, nigga. You not finding me, bro. Like yeah. I wasn't really gonna pick up for you off the original call. Right. But now that he got stars and stripes court, I'm not coming outside, bro. I'm a villain now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, you got to be a villain. Yeah, right. I'm about to go rob somebody today. Yeah. I'm with them. Just so they know. Yeah, they say, bro, either uh, you get down or you lay down. Exactly. I'm getting down with the get down. I'm robbing. <laughs> <laughs> this fight is going to be stupid at the end. That's all I'm no, I mean, at this point. It's going to be stupid. Like when you think big picture, it really doesn't make sense why they had this fight happen right now as far as plot goes in the first place, if you ask me. Like if anything, there should be a meetup between her and like some of the other heroes before this even took place. So I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking as far as storytelling, to be honest, with this fight. I think it plays into what player five said where Stars and Stripes introduction is for a training arc, like another training arc with Deku. Just a, another piece or layer of development in his character. I don't know what else you're going to add to the situation, but potentially but I mean, there's a, it. It's like, what is she even going to be able to teach Deku anyway, though? Since he's already been unlocking and wielding all his powers already in unison in the first place. It's like, I mean, what we else can't, we can't we can't discount uh, wisdom, which surely All Might should have the most of the wisdom, but I'll never see him dropping bombs. I I just can't see a reason for introducing her unless he just wanted to, you know, eh, let me give y'all a taste of other heroes. If he did that, fair. That's okay. He didn't have to. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. But if that's not the case, what else will her purpose be? She almost a one-to-one -one All Might knock. I mean, that's kind of like my point, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like that that's why I think it's silly because I just can't think of a good reason. I guess minus sure. that. But I just still just don't see that happening from mm -hmm. being real. I you guess know? I agree with you. I am just praying that it is not so useless. 
Yeah. Because that would just be, that would suck. I'd be like, you got to free stars and stripes now. She's in jail. Okay. <laughs> who is this bitch? You, you know that would know who she is. <laughs> right? Uh, oh, that's stars and stripes. Tripping, bro. Uh, another question we got was do we still need time skip, a time skip in the story? Is there enough time to even have a time skip? At this point, if they had a time skip, uh, it's an apocalypse when we come right. back. Like, can y'all remember how much time they said that they actually do have before she rises at 100%? Three it's days. like no time, right? They what said like it? three days. Yeah, like it's already here. So no, um, no time skip. And once you beat Shigaraki, I mean, obviously it's a show that you can always make a new big bad. But I ain't gonna cap, bro. Is it an awful one? Oh. You gotta, you gotta send Japan to hell, bro. Every nuke in the in the world, I'd have just call up the UN like, hey, look, hey, Russia. I know we've been on it, but check it out. I'm gonna send three thousand nukes. Stay away. You send three thousand. We'll be done with this nigga Shit, by tomorrow. Shit, low key. Wow. That might be the rule. So, like, if all for one get that shit, his rule may be something to protect Japan from interference. I swear, because so I that he could that end shit. that shit. Hell, boy. He he probably gonna take that shit and be like, yeah, nobody else could come here or whatever, whatever fucking rule he gonna make up. But something to just prevent a massive, like, you know, like what you said, like niggas might go to the point where they're like, yeah, we gonna nuke this bitch. He might be like, yeah, no, fuck it. And I will argue that wouldn't even be such a drastic call. I'm like, yo, Japan, effectively the head of hero society, has completely devolved into a lawless madman world, and nobody's strong enough to stop them, even all might. Bro, take that shit off the map. Japan don't exist no more. I start campaigns. I would literally remove Japan from global maps, nigga. I get rid of anime. We wouldn't even say the word Japan no more, bro. That shit be gone. Oh, that's man. crazy. All flights canceled, boy. I'm gotta... gonna I'm gonna change the topic of discussion before because yeah. we already pretty close to a real life event that happened to Japan. Let me, right? let me just put that out there. <laughs> So, oh you know, in remembrance of the niggas who might have died from those nuclear attacks, let's yeah. go ahead and change the subject. <laughs> hey, man, we already got demonetized. Right? <laughs> now we just got to worry about getting removed. Actually, so, hey, never mind. I ain't going to. We good. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so it's not like everybody's on the know with the time skip. Last one is just Stars and Stripes Quirk versus One for All, where we feel like they land. Um, with all of this new developments that you guys brought up, as far as in Stars and Stripes hand, no. I don't I, I can see how all my beats are, but I don't know how it is like I don't know if some of the stuff we discussed is possible and Stars and Stripes just doesn't use it. If that's the case, like if this power in a villain's hands becomes more re reality manipulation because they don't give a fuck, then I would say that I would take this quirk over one for all any any day. In my be. mind. If you want to know who still might be able to be her, low key? Who? That nigga Don't Mario. say live drop. Oh, <laughs> shut up. Hey, Mario. <laughs> she can't touch him. If That's he, fair. If he to touch. That's true. That's fair. Oh, uh, she could kill that nigga. Because hear me out. Uh, he has to hold his breath to use his quirk. That's true. No and no. Uh, he comes up for breaths. I would just be like, the oxygen above us is gone. It's like, bro, you you got to knock me out in one hit because you only got a couple seconds before you run out of oxygen, my nigga. I know your quirk makes you not breathe, so come on. And this, this, at that point, if she almost as strong as all my, I just run away from that nigga till you pass out. Like, her quirk is super strong, but like I said, if Siler from Heroes taught me anything, being a smart <laughs> nigga that can take powers is tops. I don't care what your power is, bro. I'm smart and I'm taking that. That's mine now. No, but I'm not talking about all for. I'm talking no, about no, no. He all said one for all. He one said for one all. for all. Ooh, well, okay, one for yeah, all. One for yeah. all. All, all for one is, of course, OP, bro. That's that's pinnacle. My, my, uh, I still yeah, gotta give it to one for all because my number one superpower, period, on the power scale is super speed. If you are the fastest in your verse, you are the strongest. You gotta speed work kills. real hard for that. My I, nigga, I Deku. can pick this up and give it to me. She can, that can, can reach one for a hundred percent. I'm something. the fastest person in the universe. Clearly, she can't do that. <laughs> <if she could. laughs> I don't know that's, if that's the case, bro. But my that's nigga, that's if she can get the sentence out, right? 
There's two ways to literally say the whole the, sentence. You oh, but want somebody to get in the fight. She can easily prep these things before a fight that's, ever happens. That's right. That's now, not I, wanna, the only thing I'll <laughs> argue is that let's just say you live in a world that like doesn't involve fighting crazy heroes, villains, etc. Right? And we're just talking about which one of these two quirks would be best as far as living or even doing like gangster-ish things, whatever. In my opinion, I would say the Stars and Stripes quirk works better simply because because of the rules you can place on yourself, your rate of growth can change depending on what you want at that moment. For example, what if you want to do like some effing increase your education, increase like your actual body rate of growth when training? Like you could become more of a boss faster by just placing it correctly. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah, my nigga just said I would you can say steroids into your own system. That's what I just heard. Well, juice. <laughs> <laughs> juice. So I don't know. I, I just see it where it's like if I was born with a quirk, the two like you know give myself rules or give right reality bending rules would be a lot more broken while I like you know just live my life depending on one for all. Give so me, you gotta remember uh, if you were born with one for all and you a little ass kid and you don't really know how to control the power. You're going to be playing around, playing wrestling or doing something or whatever. You're going to swing and boom, your whole arm and everything just going to blow up because you just unleashed this power that you can't even control. Because right. rem you remember what happened to Deku as soon as he got that power. That's now true. you're a little kid with no muscle mass and you mm -hmm. just unleashed all this power. Yeah, you do dead. You could argue the same thing for Stars and Stripes, right? Like, I think her being not the smartest person is good because, like, if you just kind of say something wild, like, let me think of some random thing like I don't know. You want to charge your phone? Oh, I wish the the air around me had like twelve volts of current. That's surely enough to kill a human. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and to you, okay. you're looking at the thing like, oh, twelve volts. That's just enough for a cell phone. I'm good. Bam! You kill everybody in your house. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are some minor things you could do with this quirk that would be horrible for everybody around. Like, oh, I wish these two hydrogen atoms would fuse. Your city's gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm like, there are small things you can say that would just destroy everything. So I think that from a quirk singularity standpoint and the, the nature of the world, yes, Stars and Stripes quirk is stronger as the world shows that quirks get stronger. Because this is just a damn near one gen, one for all a one gen quirk that just keep getting passed on. In the world where they stand right now, I think one for all is stronger because they have fucking nine generations to get buffer. All because of speed. If she could make herself that fast, because she's not even faster than All Might, she would. Because speed is the strongest power. While she's busy going, I should, her head's in the, another continent right now. You know what I'm saying? It's over with. Speed is too strong. It beats everything that isn't faster than it. And I think that that's fair in a Stars and Stripe versus All Might fight. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is from zero... I honestly think you're probably going to be better off with Stars and Stripes Court than One for All because we see where Deku is and how long that took. Like with that, like like uh, Jugga said, there's a bunch of ways to finesse it to improve your development, get better at it. Plus, it's a quirk you can hide a little bit better. To me, the benefit of One for All is like, one, that strength thing that comes with it, but two, all of the previous users. The shitty part is all the previous users have shitty ass fucking quirks. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, if you had this person on the roster, Lumil, like imagine if your co council of of uh, reeds or whatever mm -hmm. was fucking stars and stripes, Lamillion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like these niggas is what you're carrying in the back pocket on top of All Might's power. That's a real nigga. That bro. shit That's will overflow the cup super quick. Bro. Uh, Hell That's yeah. overflowing yeah. the cup. Yeah. On, the, <laughs> on the second power, it's yeah, overflowing. Bro. No shit. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit will just, uh, just fucking stop moving, bro. The cup over fucking flow, dog. Like, no way you get two quirks like that in there. Yeah, you gotta just build that body for it. I'm sure there's gonna be a like if someone strategized it right, <laughs> there's probably a way you could have passed it. So by the time it got to Deku. It actually works. Like, if you took somebody's quirk, who was that, like, they're more or less immortal or some shit like that. Oh, you And then you passed it to that person, and then you pass it to the next person. It's like, you can set it up so you can actually hold all these quirks reasonably. Uh -huh. But 
The reason I don't believe that is because all for one effectively did that, right? He got an amalgamation of all the best quirks, and we still see it took like a science freak show to put this nigga body together to even contain that. You right. know what I'm saying? Like he could, you can't even get that way. A nigga really got to build you that way. Like so, I I think he get some cold quirks out of there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you you put that in one for all, nobody holding that, bro. Mm. Nobody. But this is what I want to say, bro. Like, I, I see if a nigga like one with one for all exists, I'm not mad at you. You, the only thing you really can do with your quirk is be a hero. Stars and stripes exist. Like, bro, why are you fighting people? Why don't you just come <laughs> here and be like, hey, y'all, uh, in this area, cold fusion is possible. I've solved the world's energy problems with one <laughs> word. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you throwing punches, bro? Like, because go the heroes are reality. stupid. The heroes are stupid. All Bite has gone around and sold his dream as in order to be a great person, you need to be able to punch the shit out of things. So do you say that's that's the message that he sent. He went everywhere and they were like, Well, he just punches the shit out of things and everything seems to be okay. So I'm just gonna do that. Like I'm as long as you smile and say plus ultra, you good. Yeah. That's true. His marketing team is amazing, bro. Put some respect on this. Right? <laughs> and that, that's the last thing I'll put on it, for me at least. I love the pull-up of that chapter. Like, when she pulled up on top of the motherfucking, uh, whatever, like, uh, Jets and yeah. shit. Yeah. And then Sugar Rocky was on the other side just like, yo, solo dolo ready to go. I hey, thought that was dope. I got a certain feel about that. If you're going to pull up that hard... You can't lose, bro. You <laughs> feel me? That, and that's my only thing that I got. Like, I was like, damn, that's the hardest pull up I've seen by a hero, damn near, period. Yeah. I don't got the balls to pull up on no nigga like that because I don't believe there's a hundred percent chance I would. You got to come in with a hundred percent certainty. I'm about to knock this nigga out. You pull up on a jet like this, bro. Like, no belt, bro. I'm yo, standing on that yo. Question though, what was she blasting <laughs> during that whole flight over though? Duck, if she uh -huh. had to be begging some hard shit. Oh yeah, for sure. Duck if you broke. She that was, was some shit. <laughs> okay. Or some city girls. She was playing some city girls in the back. <laughs> she was ready, bro. She from America. She probably got right. the Glock behind her, bro. Oh, <laughs> oh this is my, this is my. He, he oh. wanted the Jets. Her sidekick Glock three thousand. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Glock man. The sidekick is a bunch of B-32 stealth bombers. Like, <laughs> you know how hard you gotta be? That's how you pull up on a nigga with some stealth bombers? Like, come on. Yep. <laughs> if she lose, she my goofy of the year. She goofy of the year. Hey, she oh, no. You can't pull up like that and get beat. Hey, we still taking the nominees. She gonna take the lock drop. She gonna take the lock drop L of the year. That's worse right. than lock. That's actually the exact same thing lock drop did. Talk that shit because we wouldn't have hated lock drop if he was quiet. Right. He was talking shit like he was that nigga. And <laughs> after he got whooped, he was still talking like he was that nigga. Right? And like if she go home after losing. With no quirk, but on a jet still, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Lockdrop in one of the bombers right now. Lockdrop in one of the bombers right now, providing advice like, yo, hey. <laughs> Lockdrop was like, look, 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 check it out. When you pull up on this nigga, pull up on him hard. Right. She was like, no, nah, I want to be subtle. Hard. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy, bro. Hey, bro. Um, um, all right, uh, let's jump to Black Clover. Um, real quick, just let's put that respect on you know <laughs> first. You know, look, you I know gotta both. call you out, player five, because I remember <laughs> <laughs> in one of these chapter reviews, bro. We sat there and we was talking about and I, I fought myself too because I did think somebody else might have interfered, but we sat there and talked about fucking you know yep. and the power-ups in this arc, and you was like, Yeah, yep. bro, I don't think he's taking out Zeno alone, bro. And I said, <laughs> You're sleeping. <laughs> You sleeping on the floor. <laughs> he didn't you know? do it alone. What was the help? What was the real help? Niggas bought some time. Niggas bought some time. We really don't call that help. <laughs> This the help. If, if it was him solo dolo, he would have got killed. That nigga got knocked from wherever they was fighting all the way to the book getting ceremony place, boy. They they knocked that nigga somewhere. <laughs> and all that time while he was sleep dreaming, them niggas was fighting for their life, bro. If they wasn't there, you know, would just be dead. That time they spent fighting for his life for him to talk with his inner self and get a second grimoire. That's all them, bro. He didn't do it alone. But what I say at the end of that, after I said, you know, wouldn't do it alone, 
uh, Jugger was like, hey, don't forget the name of the show. And what I say, you right, it's you know Clover, bro. <laughs> you know go do it what you know what to do. Hey, big facts. And he did that. He did that, bro. Two fucking grimoires. One, they said, well, he got a star power, which is apparently from his Spade King. Then they were also talking about the elves thing, which is where I missed, like, what the relation there was to the power up. Because Lich started talking, or Patrick started talking about, oh, he got Lich's son shit in him. Is that just a love by man apart, or was that no, a book? They were just saying wind magic in general oh, was, was what from he his got kid. from Patrick. And that's ah. not Hugo's actual magic. All of that Star shit magic was... is his magic. That's what yeah. they were saying. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah, I feel got like it. they were saying all that shit, like, you know, getting a fork, uh, clover, uh, all that shit was like, that's not even you know. That bro. was the elf. Right? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's so even. funny, bro. Because that puts <laughs> even more respect. Like, this nigga was dope using somebody else's shit for a while. Now he got his own shit. And that shit came filled up. Right? It's already <laughs> Bags, it's it's cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the spells you need, my G. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need, bro. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, nah, yeah. man. He that power it. up from you know was crazy. The ability to teleport alone, That's instant true. transmission yeah. alone, puts him up there to be able to fight Asta. Now he got like a myriad of random spells that just whatever fuck Saint he. Saint Sage, bro. Saint Saint also Sage, popped so. that out. Yeah, Basically, he... them niggas was like, oh, they thought Asta couldn't be beat. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go, you. <laughs> <laughs> like hey, bro, go, go. It's you know Clover for real. So really now good. to the question to ask for this this discussion: What's the projected Black Bull top five? It's not related to you know, but okay. hey, <laughs> I'll toss I'll toss you know unless sorry unless somebody else want to put more respect on you know name or that the you know shit period. So you know Clover. Um, yeah. fuck. Okay. Okay. Oh, also excluding we're excluding Asta and we're excluding uh Yami. Uh, Yami. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Yami, Yami and Asta are either at the top, or we don't know if he'll live. So excluding those two top Black Bull members, mm -hmm. anybody want to start? Fuck. Um, I'm gonna pull out Leopold at the top. <laughs> that nigga not even a Black Bull. <laughs> First of all, no. Real talk. Uh, though, real talk. I would say at the top is gonna be Noel for me right now. Saying that just because I think that's fair. Same sage and just also including this is including the water spirit from what I've seen. So if she doesn't keep it afterwards, she might drop. But if she happens to keep the water spirit, to me, she I don't see how niggas is beating her at one right now. Um, my two, ooh, it'd be tough. But I might from what I've seen. Luck is probably two or three for me. Only because I've seen him use the array magic so far. I honestly feel like if like if I saw Gauss use it, or if I saw particularly Gauss, if I saw Gauss use array magic, I think he would jump over luck for me. But I have not seen that. So yeah. I can't say it. Luck? Ah, Gauss under there? Maybe tied with Charmy because that food magic seemed a little OP. And then huh, I have to say you it. You don't say his name, bro. I'm gonna come through I the have screen. To say bro. It. I have <laughs> to say it at the bottom just because he just has that trump card that I don't know outside of the ones I listed. If niggas really have a strong counter for that, and that's got to be Magna. Like, I don't know if Gray can outright counter that move that he has to even the playing field. I can see Gauch doing it. I can see Luck doing it. I can see Noel doing it. But other than that, I can see everyone else kind of getting trapped by it in the right in the right scenario. So that would be my five for right now. Um, I'll go ahead. Uh, the first person I'm going to put up here is not up here because of battle prowess, um, because he doesn't have any offensive moves. But after this fight, I have to put, uh, what's that boy? Uh, Finro. Really? Number one. And my reason being is that Finro, as a non-arcane state, a, a regular nigga, <laughs> went against Zenon, who was to this point probably the strongest human on the fucking planet, 
and Zenon could actually not touch this nigga. With the, the god of space demons in him, couldn't physically put a finger on this nigga. It was only until this nigga, like, he held him for three minutes. He held the strong, like, it, nobody else is actually going to ever be able to physically touch uh, Fenrir. Like, you can't. Like, it, it took a whole spatial demon, the strongest nigga out there, to even land a hit. If Fenrir uses his mana zone with his magic, no, who can touch him? Asta probably can't even touch this nigga. I'm not sure. You know what I'm saying? That's something I wonder about. If Asta can touch him, all right, I might drop him down to two or three. But right now, I don't even think Asta can touch him. Unless he used mana zone. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean he's catching W's, though. That just means he's living off till his mana's over, though. I but mean, I, I did say that. I, he has zero offensive ability, and I'm not putting him up here because of his ability to win a fight. I put him up here because that is one of the single strongest abilities in Black Clover defensively. It's so mm -hmm. impressive defensively that there seems to be only one way to beat it with the strongest spatial devil in existence. I think that enough says, like, bro, he has an unbeatable shield. Unless you have one nigga in the universe that can stop him so far. Or you know. Or you know. You know. <laughs> <who> <laughs> and that's facts. And Austin. Don't put some respect on two of their names. Oh, but yeah. yeah, I'll put respect on that. Uh, so he's my number one right now because that defense is so respectable, I respect it. Uh then I gotta go Noel number two, uh, because just she as far out classes every other black bull as far as like just raw power. Um, so just yeah, from the raw power aspect, clearly she wins it. Yeah, number good. three, my nigga, Magna, fuck you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Magna, fuck you mean Overlook is his real name. Overlook. Uh, over luck because uh that soul chain death match, bro. He, well, how he can might you catch not, luck with that. I don't think he'll beat luck with soul chain death match, but I think that he can beat people luck could never beat with soul chain death match. Okay, if that I makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that's well, yeah, yeah. Luck yeah. will never beat Dante, but Magna did, right? Um, and then after that, I gotta go luck because with him being able to stack a raise, I've never seen anybody else do that, and I think that made luck damn near faster than the only person faster than him is Julius at this point. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Luck just too fast. And then lastly, uh, my fifth nigga, uh, I'm going to just disrespect everybody else and give it to Gauch because that's my nigga. Gauch <laughs> got that disrespect, shit. That's not disrespect, though, in my opinion. But that's not disrespect. Gauch is up there. We <laughs> haven't seen Gauch since he got a sword stuck through him like that's true. 30 chapters ago. <laughs> But so I, mean, I don't know what that nigga up Like, we honestly haven't seen a lot of the Black Bulls, period, though, if we're being real. Yeah. So that actually is not even... That's not that even... That cat trick is getting old, too. That's the other thing with Vanessa. They got some, some dope-ass niggas, but that's they true. haven't shown us how they've transformed with all these other niggas that got power-ups in the Black See, Bulls. The reason why... Okay, uh, Dante made Vanessa drop from top five to damn near at the bottom. Right. Because what it showed me is, like, she got reality warping powers, but her constraints are like, oh, if I can't the physically cat. touch it, I'm yeah. fucked. <laughs> right? I, was the like, cat. Oh, I thought the cat would be able to, like, touch gravity. The cat was just like, it's gravity. And die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can't even cut a concept with the ability to manipulate reality... There's no chance because there's too many conceptual powers out there. It's over with, yeah. you know. So she just dropped off the list completely. She a bump into that upgrade. Yeah. What was Gray's arcane stage? She had arcane uh, stage. Gray was, was pretty much was. she can make any magic into whatever type of magic she wants. With her oh. transformation. Magic. Right. So just she about to get hit with water. She could transform that to clouds, though, low key. So, I mean, it's still mad decent. I, I still give Gray like, one of the top, like, support mages in the series so far, in my yeah. opinion. She just can't get a lot of Ws by herself. That's just... I like, gotta see her pull something out. <coughs> she did something cool, but I gotta see her go hard with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yours? As far as my five, it's gonna be more close to MGG. Um... I'm gonna. I I just can't. Put, I can't put Fenrir on the top five. Like I mean, I get the defense goes, but I mean, I just can't. I just can't see. Like to me, it's just you can buy time. So I mean, which is a pretty much big ups. You can buy time no matter who the opponent is. That's something to be commendable for, but not enough that I could put you really in the top five for because you still can't really do work by yourself. Not really. But anyways, um, one Noel, 
uh, pretty much for the same reasons that uh, both y'all have already spit. I mean, like we've seen her do just straight mad work, period, mad amount, power. Just like oh, she's become, she has become one of the top overall mages that we've seen. Just, just to give her big ups. Um, two, this is where it starts to get tricky. <sighs> Fuck. Two. You <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck. Two, two, I gotta give luck. Um, I gotta give luck over Magna because I do agree that Magna can drop, or at least let me let me reword that. Magna should be able to drop stronger opponents than luck. The only thing that I would have to look back at is just the true conditions with his soul chain deathmatch. I just I just need to know the specifics of how he needs to activate it. Because the biggest thing is simply, let's say, for example, Magna v. Luck. I mean, Luck's fast as fuck. So is the Soul Chain even going to catch him? Yeah. Now, that's pretty much like my biggest question. Like, depending on the opponent, does it matter as far as speed, dodging the Soul Chain, et cetera? Mm-hmm. If it doesn't matter, then I'll put Magna ahead of Luck. You if know something does, I wonder? And I, I wonder if y'all got any insight on this. Let's say he actually does Soul Chain Deathmatch Luck. What if Luck just still run that nigga fade? Like, it, is it the only reason he beat Dante because he had honestly, hands? <laughs> I, 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 think it's, I think it's up in the air. I can see mm-hmm. either way, to be honest. So, I mean, Luck do got hands. Like, like I, I, I would not be the first one to be like, oh, yeah, and every single, like, 8 out of 10, Magna got it, or 10 out of 10, Magna got it. I don't think it's that clear cut. I think if it's not even, then you may even argue Luck may have it like six out of ten or something. But it's close. I think Luck beats Magna. I think so. I don't think ten out of ten. I'll say that much. Uh, I'll give Magna that much. If you get a win, it's a lucky jaw to me. I I can see. uh, Yeah, Luck just seems like too all around of a good nigga to just get stomped. He's not trash in no category. Yeah, that's true. And my thing is like I think. Magna wins when he go up against a typical wizard. Like, oh, you a skinny body ass right. nigga that thought yep. mana was gonna get you through life. <laughs> All right, check it out. It's the hands now. Ass niggas, bro. <laughs> but luck would be like, okay, fun. Let's throw hands. Like, that's true. So, I mean, with that said, I was still. I mean, like I said before, then uh, one Noel, two luck, three Magna. Now because of the soul chain. As far as four or five, uh, it becomes a little bit of a toss-up. This is more of uh, speculation theorizing as far as how the rest of the season is going to go. Um, I don't know why. So, someone's telling me to not sleep on Zora, but I'm, I'm going to leave that. I'm I felt that too. I'm not going to lie. I, mean, I, 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 I will leave it off for right now, but I don't know. Someone's telling me Zora going to come out of nowhere with something. I feel um, like his, his shit will be like, yo, I laid a trap under the whole city. Fuck your meteor. Like, I mean, trying to blow that well, shit. Like, <laughs> like that, that's what I feel like his power up is going to be. He's like, nigga, I was prepared for the you try to blow up the whole city contingency. No. It would be funny. <laughs> if Zora just like, yeah, I laid a trap and now I'm taking all the demons. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the establishment. <laughs> But right now, I would say, fuck. I feel like in my heart of hearts, it's probably safe to go. It's probably safe to go four Charmy and then five Gouch. Tough. I really don't I mean, like. I Charmy. just think Charmy. I, I know the one thing talking. we can't sleep at Charmy is that she can eat all magic. Like yeah. she's got a magic consuming power. We so, saw how that worked out for for a Natsu. Like I said, if Gouch. Develops the ability to use a raise, which I think he has a capability to because he's royal blood from what I understand, right? Like, yeah, he should be able to get a raise at some point. That with his mirror, which to me is close, pretty close to light magic and the way he uses it, I can see that going crazy. He that's just true. hadn't pulled it out yet. That's that's all I'm waiting on. At that point, I think I'll be able to. I'm not a fan of Gauch, if y'all don't know, mm-hmm. but I would be able to put like fight respect. <laughs> you on are Gauch. not a fan of the OG, triple OG? No, sir. 
No, well, let me say this. Gauch, honestly, is at half capacity trying to be an attack mage. Like, yes, he got the power to basically be like a light mage, which is strong attack. But mm-hmm. honestly, his best move is when that nigga do real double. Like, bro, just real oh. double Asta. Stop fighting, mm-hmm. nigga. <laughs> make clones of Asta and make him fight, bro. That's <laughs> what Gauch should do for the rest of his life. That's true. Uh, what's my job? That's I, I just get into battles and make clones of Asta. <laughs> as, as a support mage, I can see his value in that in that uh in that respect. So yeah, no, I get that to you. Yeah. All right. All right, that's it for Black Clover. Last thing before we close it out is just one piece. So I think uh if you which one do you want to start with? The theory or just uh power up? Because my power ups for Sanji is very succinct. Oh, I'm not gonna do the theory this time. Oh, okay. All right, so for Sanji's power-up, my thoughts on it is I'm not a fan. Uh, Sorry, I'm a fan of the power-up. I am not a fan of the writing of the power-up. Like, he's still being made a joke out of, in my opinion. So I'm kind of like, whatever. And it's versus Queen, so it's also still more like, whatever. I think it's dope from the explanation of why Sanji has been able to take so much damage this whole time. I don't know if they're trying to say that it's always been there and... This is it activating in full first force. So that explains why he's always punished every arc and is able to take it. Or if they're just saying it's showing up now. If it's showing up now, thumbs up, great, cool, new power. Um, but once again, still just like not enough for me from what I want out of Sanji's character. Not gonna put it on what everyone else wants, but from what I want out of him is someone that hangs with the monster trio. And this is an ability that can allow him to do that. But it's still not in a way that, to me, really shows why he's there. That's all. No, I agree. It's like based on the lore. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like, I, I honestly like completely forgot that he didn't have a you know Germa supernatural ability in the first place. I guess, but to reveal it now to me just seems a little lackluster when you simply have hockey. At least from what they're building it so far, because how I'm understanding it is simply you're 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 tough. I mean, you have, you have a tough body, more or less, right? So it's like that is literally is what we've been kind of developing with hockey in the first place. So it's like, what does that really help with it simply being automatic? Okay, but I mean, you could arguably grow the other side of it with just having strong hockey and how to use it better in the first place anyway. So to me, it kind of looks like a cheap cop out, at least for right now. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll see how it develops more. But right now, it's just more like that's what you felt like reading me out of the back pocket. I don't know. It just just, just isn't hitting as hard as what I wanted to with this fight. Yeah, um, I could definitely agree um, for the for the most part. uh, You can easily see that this moment was coming. Like, as soon as he, uh, you know, he and Zoro were talking or whatever, he was like, yo, my body feels weird after um, wearing that rage suit a couple times. We yeah. already knew, okay, the nigga's Turn about to awaken his German. German. Yep. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they are kind of like, the way that they're playing at it kind of sucks. Um, I was listening to a couple of, you know, just videos or whatever. They were kind of like saying that Oda is essentially making it, he's trying to make um, Zoro and uh, Sanji separate as much as possible for their fights for some reason mm-hmm. or, or trying to put him at some type of location where he can you know, really turn up or whatever. So yeah. I, I guess maybe I can see that being the case. You got to realize that the, this whole place is still on fire or whatever. And it seems like everybody just keeps on mentioning this fire coming up to, you know, creep, creeping up on everybody closer and closer or whatever. So mm-hmm. it seems like this fire is going to have some type of climactic, um, ending with um, with all of this, and uh, I'm guessing maybe you know Zoro is gonna knock knock King and uh, into the into the bombs at the um, at a Nagashima, and Sanji is gonna knock Queen over at him, and Luffy's gonna knock Kaido at him, and then the whole place is gonna blow up because the fighter is gonna gonna reach it or something. That's how they kill them kill them niggas or something. I'm like, I'm, wow. like I'm not I'm not sure what okay. what they're um, what they're going with this, but um, yeah. I definitely feel like it's kind of stupid to have this this upgrade. I, I definitely said it with with quotes because Sanji technically beats one of his siblings without the upgrade. Like he 
be put dents and crap all into his face and everything. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, we already saw that hockey could easily, you know, beat that or whatever. So right. what's, what's the point of it? I yeah. think it so, puts him on that potentially that big mom unexplainable strength tier type thing. Like Sanji at his max, not Sanji now, but like if Sanji was like a Yonko or some shit. I could see that being his, like, oh, I don't know why I can't fucking hit this nigga or, like, why he doesn't feel this shit. Like, that part was okay. To me, I think the only thing I'm excited about as we were talking about this is just that this just means that Vega Punk, like, when we see him, I'm expecting a lot. Because, to me, he blows both these niggas out the water. Whatever we see Queen does, that's, like baby table stakes for this nigga Vegapunk. Like, we saw he had an island of his baby experiments that were comparable to, like, some of the shit we see Queen do. And then on top of that, Judge, same thing. Like, wow, you make these freak-ass kids? Like, that should be table stakes for this nigga Vegapunk. So, to me, that's the biggest piece of excitement on my side for it is just, like, when we finally get to meet this nigga Vegapunk, my expectations are set so high right now i'm like i know he's gonna be a goofy nigga when we see him as far as his look goes but like as far as what he's capable of or what he can do build i'm expecting a lot there that's that's where i'm at with it i I would say um i'm I'm at least glad to see that sanji is going to have regenerative uh, properties to himself so when he takes a beating he's not simply going to be out for the count because i would say that was probably one of the uh, more annoying things about him with you know, anytime he got into any type of sure. scrap with somebody. Anytime you see him run up on a woman. <laughs> anytime you see him run up on a woman. Exactly. Because because so bitch that laid real. out. <laughs> Freaking Black Maria, you know, that wouldn't have been an issue or whatever. She just yeah. would have been proceeding to, you know, put the works on him. And he would have just been sitting there like, shoot, I got a boner anyway. Keep right. Hit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's I like, think you, you just, know. I think you just foreshadowed some future fights for Sanji with that Dang. one. <laughs> Excellent. Damn. So yeah, um, I, I definitely expect that something else is going to come out of the pocket. I hope. So. I can see that. Uh, All right. Uh, are anything else on that? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's close it out with MVPs and goofies. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and toss mine out. You already know MVP. <laughs> MVP for October, bro. It's gotta be you, know, bro. You know was not playing around with no niggas. At all, run up, catch a fade. I slept on him, nigga slept on him a little bit, but he had to remind you that this is you know motherfucking clover. Put some respect on my goddamn name, bro. This <laughs> nigga single handedly is about to whoop. Okay, with some help, but more or less single handedly <laughs> going to whoop a, a demon, bro. Dante got whooped by Magna. We just saw Mega Kula get whooped by a coalition of niggas, but you can attribute most of it to Noel. And now we're about to see Zio get ripped by, you know, like, if I was the Spain Kingdom or at least these evil niggas or at least the Diamond Kingdom watching this battle go on, I would be like, some is up with the Clover Kingdom. Some is in them niggas' water, bro. Because three <laughs> non-captain-ass niggas just took out goats, bro. Goats. You know what's funny? Imagine not being from their kingdom and thinking like, man, I wonder what they captain's like. Right? Them niggas saw. <laughs> Nozelle, looking at Nozelle, shaking in your boots. Yeah, you probably like, this, this her big brother? Trash ass nigga. This dude probably got all types of... Nah. Yeah. No. I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, and then my goofy has to go to Clay Man. This month I finished up part two, season two. Of uh, that time, I got reincarnated as a slime, and I got to see the culmination yeah. of cold clay man stupidity. Do not fuck with Rimaru Tempest, bro. And that nigga ended like the final fight with him wasn't even epic. He just became like a fodder joke, yeah. like towards the end of it. He got played by everyone he thought was on his side, and then he ended up just being a bitch made nigga sitting down somewhere as his ass was getting whooped by Rimaru, bro. Those are facts. Big respect. Those are facts. That's it for me. Um, I can give mine. Uh, my goofy uh, is stuck between Licks Kid and Finral. Not to take away from you know, I am a subscriber to you know Clover. Uh, I, I know you know about that action, but hear me out. 
Uh, I think it's some respect to find out that Lick's kid really has been, you know, this whole time. So effectively, I have to give a, a previous non-respect that I've been giving to, you know, I got to get that to the kid because effectively all we've been seeing out of, you know, up until now, for all intents and purposes, was Lick kid. And then Finral, for the reasons I mentioned before, uh, his spatial magic combined with Mana Zone makes him just like the perfect defensive shield. I think it's pretty dope. And then my Goofy has to go to the pilots with Stars and Stripes. <laughs> What's wrong with the pilots, bro? What they do? What you bring me out here for? Hear me out. One, them niggas didn't shoot not one shot. <laughs> they they ain't drop not one bomb, ain't send not one missile. What you talking what? about? They shot that nigga. They hit him. Yeah. They Wait, hit. I don't they hit when him. she took that nigga arrow wave, and she saw that that nigga was still able to able to keep keep going. They were. She was like, "Yo, shoot shoot that nigga," and they all shot some type of beam at him. All right. With that being said, that shit was bitch made because I don't even. <laughs> I don't even remember it. You feel me? Uh-huh. If you come in flying on what she had, like six fucking B-20 bombers, the fucking terror of the skies, bitch, you better air something out. You better drop some bombs, do something. Y'all was out here flying for fun. I'm hot. That's all I'm saying. They could have did some more. Them niggas gave me real lot drop vibes with that. Like, <laughs> you in one of the scariest military machines ever invented and you out here just flying? Hey, y'all better kill this dude. <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get to my MVP, which happens to be Stars and Stripes. Why? Oh, she thick, man. super thick, <laughs> <laughs> thick. That that American oh, meat. Thick. You can see the difference, though. That's the funny part. Because if you compare her to um, uh, All Might's mentor, or whatever fuck her name is, Nana. yeah, Nana Shibura, it's like we thought she was thick for a minute. Even yep. Miracle, I think we thought was thick, but I never fell for Miracle. I already she... knew. Why he was no ass. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm tired of this nigga. That argument. <laughs> I'm tired of this nigga. Anyways, I feel you on the thick comment. That's where I'm. <laughs> now, 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 I feel like I might ha- I might be a nominee for Goofy of the Year if she turns her power off on herself. And she looks oh. just like that nigga All Might. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to have to take that L. Okay, oh, hear me out. I think that would be a hilarious commentary on American women, like that they all, like, you know, pay to be, like, super oh, thick and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And then they take that shit off. <laughs> you know what would be funny? Is it? It would be funnier if her rule was like, yeah, my body is built on uh, grits and cornbread. And then she got it like, like this. Oh, no. I would die laughing that if that's where her thickness came wow. from. My, my body built on soul food. Like. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. Damn, bro. Yeah, her, she touched herself and was like, yo, I'm half African American. <laughs> 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 no, bro. Like, oh, hold another level. bro, like that just made me think yes. about quirks. Like, could you be mad at like if there was a white dude who quirk is he could change reality like that? And he was like, I'm a black guy. Like <laughs> you know the, you know the first DNA. way he gonna say black, after that. Bro. You know the first way he gonna say after you that. Know. <laughs> you know it, you know it. He dropping it. He gonna look like oh really? <laughs> I, I can't say it. I can't say it. I'm black now. Nigga, <laughs> beat me up if you want. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Oh. And then my goofy is um Hawkins. Full cosign. Oh, oh wait, that's fast. Somebody who's supposed to be a great schemer, a person who thinks about probabilities and what's the best way to get through any type of situation. The nigga couldn't realize that the person that he made a doll out of was missing the arm and that right? you wouldn't be able to have a backup for that? Yo, Nigga. what an idiot. What? Like, literally, <laughs> as soon as everybody noticed, like, any person that read the manga, as soon as we noticed that he had freaking um kids, you know, a straw man of kid, we were like, oh, yeah, that nigga missing the arm, though. So all you got to do is chop that nigga arm off. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I just beat you. Cars didn't read that one, did they? Nope. Dumbass, bro. He a goofy for real, though. I, I fully co-signed that. 
Once again, did we nominate him last year? I might nominate him again this year, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, that works. Nigga, bro. That works. Anyways, um, um, man, I was just looking back. Um, I don't even, I don't even know what I want to do here. Um, what I do want to make though is that I mean, MGG, you may remember since you keep up with Mash, but I'm gonna give MVP to like Mash the character. Simply because of the chapter beforehand. Baby, like, you talking uh, about baby man? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> no, I was dumb, bro. <laughs> like, when I saw that shit. They had Buddy literally as, like, a child, months old. Like, yeah. couldn't be over a year. And his brother, who's literally sending magical lasers to kill him, he's like, this mother effer was crawling at blinding <laughs> touch. And it's like, while, while the effing lasers are coming down, the whole area is getting blown up, the house getting blown up. MASH, again, months old, was a carpenter. And actually, they actually said it, said, yo, Mash this carpenter is the best. The fuck best sick, carpenter bro. alive. Loki with a hammer and wood, making like actual pieces of artwork practically. And just like, phew, that was good. Just again in a diaper, like four or five months old. I was dying. This mother effer was a G from the jump. I was like, they actually went there. I this heard series their, is such uh, a Inspiration like, for that manga was Gramps as a child. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. I can see that. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, oh, you should read Mash. You probably no, you like bro. Punch it's Man, honestly, you will really like Mash, bro. It's it's, it's like true. a comedic version of Black Clover. It's like literally Asta, but just like instead of getting a magical ability to cancel out magic, he is the magical ability to cancel out magic. He just bow flex the shit out of any magic that comes his way, bro. I, I I seen a few chapters and I seen this nigga throw a broom and hop on that bitch. Yeah, <laughs> and that's right. how he was flying. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. But bro, this I mean, this is honestly one of the funniest series I've come into contact with in a while. Like it is just chapter after chapter, just hilarious. And they actually now I could finally say like the plot they're actually like hitting. It's actually hitting. Like it, it ain't. It ain't nothing. I, I gotta give it this big ups. It's becoming pretty effing interesting too. So I mean, like this is a series that needs to get animated. Like this is some funny effing ish. Oh man. Um, as far as my goofy goes, fuck. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna give it to Queen again, just to give it to Queen, because I'm like reading back, and this mother effo launched his body like his neck as like a snake from his actual body i actually forgot about this ish that, that shit was so dumb bro yeah, that nigga. like what that the fuck it was so dumb like this kid is a bright and they hyped it up. oh look at my special move i'm actually a snake what <laughs> okay I, I guarantee you that's not a single person on earth who could have predicted that shit <laughs> 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 like what the fuck <laughs> become a snake and launch himself and then like the rest of his body just became like a laser cannon and then like his himself. laser cannon was shooting himself on accident too i mean i, I don't know I, I just i mean i tried to tell y'all queen wasn't about it from the jump but y'all y'all didn't want to listen but that's okay. that's fair that's fair i'll give you that oh man. you were right <laughs> you were 100 right, bro. but anyways yeah that'll just be my two but holy crap uh, <laughs> Well, yeah, that is it for this episode. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Comment on the video if you like it. Hit the like button if you like it. Other than that, we will catch you on the next one. See you later. Goodbye. Until next time. Peace.